testing. Sarah, what have you done? Kerrigan, the die you cast. What's up, guys? FSL Day 19. I got some co-hosts. Let's bring in the co-hosts here. And it's going to be a little, a little slow here on the switcheroo. But... It's still... There you go. There you go. 
Whoops, little bit of a... Alright, they're here now. Little little hiccup there on the switching. Ooh. Hey gamers. What's up? What's up, bunnies? What's up, Hyper Turtle? And got a test realm for a new patch or a PTR or whatever you want to call it. You guys been playing it? And a GSL confirmed to be going again next year. It's, that's good you news. Know, that's, that's a lot of news in one week for a game a that doesn't news. get a lot of news these days. Yeah, a lot of great news. What do you think about that, Bunnies? Have you been keeping touch? Yeah, um, I'm not thrilled about a lot of the changes mm -hmm. uh, that are coming up. Uh, I think it... We'll see. I mean, at the lower levels, balance doesn't matter as much, but I like to watch the high-end stuff, so I hope yeah. it ends up making it, you know, I've, good. I've just been having fun watching the, you know, big uh, StarCraft YouTube people try to ask their Twitch chats what range slop is. <laughs> Explain what so, that is for the guys. <laughs> uh, well... When there's an attack, there's animation, and there's some cases where if the animation hasn't completed before the uh, target moves a little bit out of range, oh. then it doesn't count as hitting. And so mm -hmm. Ultralisks, they're, uh, they're cutting down on that so that the big uh, sizer blades well, that's good. find their mark more often. That's only fair, right? Yeah, and the Ultralisk is going on a diet. So they can fit in. They don't get blocked too much, right? That's the point? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, New Year's duels, let me tell you. <laughs> it be smaller than an uh, Ultralisk. It only took the, four uh, years. The Archon's also going on a diet. No more, hey, I recalled all my units, but my wall doesn't fit Ultralisks oh, out. Oh, that's a big yeah, deal. Not, you know how many not a diet so stuff, much yeah. as, you know, it gets a little bit greased. So, yeah. Uh, does everything fit now through the uh, one... One, uh, you know, size hole thing? Yeah, I think not so. The, not everything, but, well... Like, well, what doesn't fit from the Protoss side? Okay. Well, from the Protoss, yeah. I think just Thors now don't fit. Ultralisks still don't fit through one spot. They're as big as Ravagers about now. Do ra don't Ravagers fit through one spot? Well, I've had Ravagers walk through a one spot wall. Okay. Uh... You know, I'll have, I'll have to look into that a little bit more, but, yeah... They should Protoss... increase the size of Lings. <laughs> the size it's of been experimented game, with, yeah. uh, at least by the modders. Yeah, that's crazy. So what I'm hoping is that uh, you know, once we get some things rolling, as far as this, uh, some of these community streams we're talking about, maybe the first stream could be on the test realm. Hey, you know I what? Think, I think they might have timed that announcement pretty well. Yeah, you you want to do some events with the test uh, test mm -hmm. realm, right? So. I think that we can kind of do something fun like that, for sure. And speaking of fun, uh, that's the letter F. That's what that stands for, right? We have FSL. Yeah, it started family, then friends, and of course, you know what? It's just for everybody for fun. So Family, friends, and fun. And we should call it the 3 FSL. Triple, triple F, yep. Um, why don't you guys talk about the games tonight? Here you go. Well, oh. first up, we have a couple of our junior competitors, don't we? Uh, I think Code A is going first, aren't right. they? Yep. Yeah, Stu Blue and the Archaic. Um, Archaic has played, uh, been a Code A player for two seasons now, and Stu mm -hmm. Blue, this is his first, is that correct? Yep, that's correct, and he's, I, he's been stepping up a bit. He, yes. Um, I, I think that this is a, uh, matchup. That's been going. I think these guys have played each other quite a bit. They, they were both Code B players, if I'm not mistaken, three seasons ago, maybe four. Um, so it, it's nice to see these guys progress as they get older and better. Well, um, the and deadlier. Been like the, the beast, right? He's been really good everywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. I, it's this is going to be a tough test for Stu Blue for sure. Yeah, um, he, he pulled the upset last week against uh, Mr. David here, but I don't know if he can even do it against the You know, it was, it was great, because Cyan was actually telling me before there, it was like, I have to get him up from his nap, and all I could think of was, oh boy, I need a nap. <laughs> so, he took your yeah. energy. Now, sadly, uh, I went to bed early last night, but it's all for naught, because 2v2 is going to have to wait for another night. There yeah. were a couple uh, schedule conflicts there. However... We got code B, 
we got uh, we got Mrs. Zubris XL, mm-hmm. you know, playing the new generation in Fenrir. New That's... generation Fenrir. Explain that one. I Mrs. Uh, Zubris Cell plays Mr. a shield Zubris. style, and yep. Fenrir plays an aggressive style, so it's a good stylistic matchup for the viewers, I think. Also, I'm not positive, but there might be a little bit of age difference between them. <laughs> 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 yeah, um, right, so the so two that, that there's two code S matches, and um, mm-hmm. not to put down Neutrophil and Hurt in Time, but the one I'm looking for is uh, Veils versus Ghost Chant. I think that's going to be a really They're a fun really series. Be putting their TV two to the test. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see, let's see how this this goes, because I heard someone's been practicing really hard for this. I, I, I wish I'm, I was that person, but <laughs> I I've been looking for this. There's certain matches I like to I like to see, uh, like Dark Menace and Instability. I, I really look forward to this one on the map when it comes out. Like Veils versus Ghost Chant can be very interesting. So yep. I'm hoping that we uh, I, these all have the ability to uh, put on some very interesting shows. Neutrophil and Hurtin' Time. I don't know. Um. How that's going to be stylistically, I think Neutrophil should be the favorite, but I think Hurt in Time could uh, give him a run. Yeah, it'll, it'll be tough. Hurt in Time has room for really surprise. Won. He hasn't really won you know. this season, so he's a little off. Yeah. Right. right. Well, why don't we do this? Which one are we starting off with interviews first? Let's let's bring him in. Yep. yep. Who was Code A first? time. Code A. Code A for Archaic. A. So the Archaic and Stu Blue. All right, joining us now is the Archaic and Mr. Stublu. Go ahead, gentlemen. So, um, I'd like to start off asking some questions for uh, Stu Blue. Uh, hot off your uh, beatdown of Hyper Turtle, you feeling more confident you can take on the upper echelons of Code A? Uh, a little bit. A little bit, because um, I I think our uh, the archaic is probably the favorite to win oh. code A. Am I mistaken? Look at that finger play there. Yeah, I, I think he is. 8 p.m. already. Yeah. yeah. So, um, this will really you was it last season you were in code B or was it two seasons ago? Uh, two Blue. seasons. Two seasons. So this will really be the real test if you're. Ready to meddle up and uh, move your way up to through the ranks, eventually end up in Code S. So um, I think the Archaic is getting pretty close to uh, to promotion. So if you can hang tonight, I think that's a real big step in the right direction. Turtle, you got any questions? Uh, not on this one. I'm kind of hypnotized by that pen, by those pen tricks there. <laughs> well, why don't you start asking the Archaics? Fun. All right, Archaic. How are you feeling? Uh, how long has it been since your last uh, FSL match? Um, I think it was November 21st or something. Okay, it's not too long. You've been yeah, keeping up I, with the game since then? I've been playing a lot of other games besides StarCraft, but I have been again. playing StarCraft. Okay. And have you been preparing for this match? Um, I procrastinated and forgot. <laughs> Fair enough. He's got some honesty uh, going for him. Goes along. Oh, no, I mean, uh, I'm not as confident as I could be okay. for this match. As so a both of you have a little bit to players. prove yourselves as well as your opponent. Then. All right. Anything that one or the other of you would like to say? What would you like to tell your challenger? <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. Have fun. Good luck. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, then we're uh, ready to go. We'll go ahead and move you guys to another right. channel and uh, yeah. let's get going. All right. They're no longer here. We'll take out the camera because we're gonna focus on the yeah. players now. What do you guys uh-huh. think? What's What's your prediction on the scores? And I'm, I'm gonna show the maps too. I I think the Archaic's been playing um, at a low code a s level um he, if he's a little rusty um stu blue has a chance stu blue played well but I, I think the archaic should be 
the favorite here, but with StarCraft, a little bit of slop. If you're not up on your builds and you're not moving smoothly, just a little bit's all it takes to uh, knock you down a little bit. Especially, so. if, especially if you're favoring aggression. So there's, yeah. there's a lot of, you know, it's going to be a big opportunity for Stu Blue. We're just going to have to stand. Yeah. All right, and guys. what do we got? We got Moondance first off, right? Straight. Yeah, all the all the standard. These are all kind of standard yeah. maps, straightforward. Um, the Moon Dance has got that pocket, but uh... yeah, you know, still aside from that, more or less same formation. We got a lot of the first two maps. We got the usual sort of up and down terrain. Oh, and we are heading to the lobby. Bunnies, make sure you join too. I'm gonna join. There you go. I'm I'm slow, but not that slow. Well, tell that to a turtle, will ya? <laughs> All right, Stu Blue says he's ready. Yeah. Uh, All right, I... Protoss versus Protoss. There's a lot that can happen here at the very beginning. Yeah, I I expect uh, the five minute timing. Kind of protest five minute timing, and which uh, archaic. and which side do you expect the first aggression from? Okay, archaic. archaic. Yeah, I hope Zublu can manage and um, hold himself off. Um, DTs might win one of these one of these sets straight out. So at this level, that's very common. Yeah, a lot of it's about whether or not you're prepared for what's getting thrown at you. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. In the lower right, we have our purple Protoss. His name is. Um... <clears throat> and in the upper left, we have the red Terran, and he is called. The Archaic. I switched my Observer Replay mode, so... I'm not sure... I don't think I can yeah, follow... Yeah. Just hit the number. One follows uh, Archaic, two follows Stublo. Yeah, but... I want to follow the Observer. That's three. Yep. So I found out. All um, right. So what do so we have so scouting, far? So both scouting, standard build. Yep. Um, little, uh, nice little wall off with partial depot. Is there a yep. gap there? Um, no. Doesn't look like it. No, this is very standard. Um, uh, the archaic, a little slow taking his like, third gas, second. No cyber core. I, I don't like this build for the arcade. Um, oh, I mean, is for he Stublu. actually? Nope. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, for Stublu. Arcade uh, Spana. Yeah, for Stublu, this is. Yeah, that that's very late. Um, mm -hmm. I, uh, that's yeah. the type of thing that I don't think he can afford against a player of the archaic's caliber. Um, yeah. your... He likes to focus on the extra gateways to begin with. Yeah, but it's yeah. It, everything's a little late, and yeah. that's that's really yeah, not. But we have a little worker chase going on, but uh, that has to be called his friend. Yeah. Um, I like the aggressive expansion. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would have liked to see a, a depot and a gateway in the front, a uh, you know, depot pylon and a gateway in the front. To mm. at least have a little bit of a choke, I I actually prefer to leave my um, my cyber core back. I I don't like it jumped on and then having to warp in zealots on that timing attack speed. Um, right into Twilight Council, I like that. Um, Ooh, stim already on the way. <clears throat> yeah, very very early stim. Mm -hmm. um, normally you see an extra barracks go down. Yeah, that, if you're gonna go that early stim, well, and uh, that probably means another... really aggression. Although they have both expanded. Yep, tanks. Yeah. What? 
There's a tank on the way, but uh Oh, there's the Marine. Yeah. Okay, I was wondering if he was gonna drop a uh yeah. starport. Aside, aside from uh trying for a lucky snipe on that uh partially completed supply depot, we're not seeing a lot of uh either of them getting in the other's face. No, no, this is too too yep. early. Oh wow. Yep. So I guess matching the early stem with early charge. Yeah, that that matches Stu Blue's MO. Yep, and he's the uh there's a good scout on the uh Stargate. I wonder if he saw saw it. Or if he just at this well, level it's hard to tell. Um because it's gonna appear just as a blob if if he didn't actually put eyes on it. Mm-hmm. True enough. Morphing in. Um Okay. Got the orbital started now. Yep, and uh they're both kind I, of patiently I, building up. I feel like Stu Blue's uh, mechanics are getting a little bit better as the, the game's gone on. He didn't miss his uh, pylon. And it, it's uh, the Archaic who's looking a little bit um, yeah. say out of sorts, but... Um, well, maybe, maybe Stu Blue's being smart about it and not playing these other fancy games that we keep hearing about. <laughs> yes. But, uh... The archaic, um, I can say he's, uh, he's just a little behind on yeah. the uh, the workers. Got the Viking up there, just in case there's a warp prism on the way. About there but is not. He's uh, he's missed a couple rounds of mm -hmm. SCVs, and that's put him with nothing happening. Yeah, I wasn't expecting Stu Blue to be so far ahead in supply. Yeah, that's what I'm I, saying. I yeah. he's missed a couple. Of... And those uh, those zealots have their charge now. So yeah. if, he, if he realizes that Stu Blue could take advantage, but there's a very snippy, a, a very uh, well placed mine right out front. Um, I like that. It doesn't cost oh. much, and oh, it yeah. catches the move out. It's uh... exactly the advantage isn't just the fact that it uh, does a little bit of splash. It's that you know when your opponent is getting ready. And maybe even hat cause them to turn around once they know they got busted. Well, it's like having an observer, but better because it actually hurts. <laughs> yeah, but it also reveals itself too. Nice thing about an observer is once they move out, they don't always know that you know that they moved out. Well, that's true. I'd rather take the uh, chance of a game ending damage on a well placed Widow Mine shot. Fair enough, and Zealots can definitely get hit hard by those. Yeah, um, Stu Blue went to third base, uh, still moving along. I, yeah. Oh, look, look at this, he'll, he'll spot it right away. Oh. Does he go and attack it, or does it... Yeah, what a... Yeah. Oh, yep, no armor, is so yeah. he's welcome to. Oh, and the Marine, yeah. The Marine's Granted, scouting. that Marine was meant to be thrown away, but... Yeah. Um, I don't think he got so... much for it. He's still... It's a, it's he's a weird little down... map, but... It's kind of less a third base, more of a two and a half base. Uh, yeah, but it 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 provides it serves minerals, purpose. and not only that, it provides more chrono. That, well, yeah, or scans, mm -hmm. yes. Oh yeah, they'll both take their third. Robo I'm shocked and how fleet beacon. I'm I'm shocked how far ahead Stu Blue is in this matchup. He's not miss. This is at this level the most important thing, and something I would I'd tell you. Um, is not missing your uh, worker cycle, your macro cycle for your workers, is as important as anything else you can do. No yeah. damage has been done, and Stu Blue's got himself a hefty 16 worker lead. Yeah, yeah, I, that's. Uh... I don't like his nothing but zealot army. I know he's going to go into yeah. carriers now. I suspect. Oh, but um, doing a void ray speed upgrade, but. <laughs> Yeah, but those nothing, only do so well against marines. But nothing but zealots is. Um, this is not an attack. He should. He should go home. He should go home right now. I. I think so. He saw that. He should like. Hey. Who is he? How bold is he feeling? He uh, is feeling bold, and I think bold. this might not work out in his <laughs> favor. Yeah, he should have gone home. Uh, um. Vikings, if they're well microed, you can keep kiting the void rays, but that is tricky. As uh, yeah, as our 
As our the, found out. Now, he's well defended at home. I don't think that even though this is a large number of zealots, these tanks are well positioned and there's a bunker. I think this is going to be a little bit of a meat grinder, but he might have enough. You know, mineral only, so I I think he might actually uh, Void rays, come get out rid of the tanks. Oh yeah, target him down. I think that, yeah, I think that's it. Wow. Uh, you know, yeah. do you get the feeling this week Stu Blue has been smelling blood in the water a little bit? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I... Yes. Oh, oh, oh. Let your hate guide you. Yep, this game is definitely over. Yeah, I mean, he can. He might be able to drag it out for a little bit, yeah, but either way, the outcome's going to be the same. Oh, yeah. He hid some of his uh, SCVs inside that command center. I don't see that very often. I wonder if he even did it on purpose anyway. He doesn't have... You know what's funny? He doesn't have any response to the... Uh, yep, there's GG. G, no, GG. It's, uh, I'm assuming plural. Otherwise, I don't know if the F stands for it. <laughs> but yeah, Stu Blue continues to impress. Yeah, that that is an awesome I victory think, for him. And it, you know, I think it he's was... really found his stride with these gate these mass gateway pushes. You know, he might be leaving himself kind of vulnerable early, but he is hitting at the right times. Mm-hmm. And just his, just the macro on the strength of his macro alone. Yeah, yeah it's the it's the old worry about micro later kind of deal. Right. It's... And boy, with, with zealots, who cares yeah. about micro? Yeah. We're, hey, we're... I, I see either that cyan or that thing popping out of the box there. I'm not sure. What? Adam's family. Oh. I see I see a hand. Yeah. The archaic seemed a little rusty, I'll, I'll be honest. Yep. Um, and he he voiced himself that that might be a problem. He's yeah. uh he looks very deep in thought right now, trying to figure out what to do a little differently. Yeah, I I I would right. say yeah. Lobby time. Lobby time. I would say lobby time. Uh, and have ourselves a snack. Turn the game myself without invite. Yeah. Isn't isn't it cool? Some of the little tricks we've learned outside the game at this point. Now that we've been casting a little. Yeah. Um, so, All right. do you think Archaic's going back to Protoss? Uh, yes, and on top of that, switching his color to pink. Oof. Uh, he means maybe, business now. We should bother one up. No, nah, maybe not, but it's hard. For us, it's going to be hard as observers, that pink and purple. Okay. You know, why, why should we have it easier than the players? <laughs> You know, we need our challenges, too. Otherwise, how are we going to be ready when we're running some of our own streams without anyone helping out? Uh, okay, they both say they're ready. We are on Tropical Sacrifice. Yeah, about hey. a, I'd, I'd say, out of all the standard maps in this map pool, this is probably the most standard, wouldn't you say? <laughs> yes. Yes, this Very, is definitely pretty the Pretty defensible. Um, the only thing I would say is it's hard to take a um, the Because the... Once you get to your, I mean, well, it's not hard to your fourth. It's hard to take a fifth. Once your fourth is up, quick. All right, in the lower left, the purple Protoss up one game. His name is um, Stupid. <laughs> and in the upper right. The pink, 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 pink Protoss, his name is... The Archaic. Alright. We have ourselves a mirror match here, and probably the most unpredictable of the mirror matches. Now we oh. have, uh... Early Probe going out on the side of the pink Archaic. Um, yeah, but he looks like he's nope. not going in a devious direction. He looks like no, he's No, no going... Forge. No, I'm saying it's not even like a proxy. He's just going straight in, no. just to spot him. Yeah. Um, if he if he chucks, if this is anything like Dooblue's last handful of games, 
He's probably going to be seeing double gate. Unacceptable oh. war hey, hey. Can they get... <laughs> you know, you can you can block an assimilator without actually putting one down. Yep. Plus... <laughs> Every Protoss knows that. Oh, indeed. Especially if you've taken out another Protoss at any point in your life. <laughs> um, there's a proxy pylon by Stu Blue. Yeah? It's an interesting spot. Um, yeah, I think he's. I think he's still figuring out his proxies, but uh, you know, spot to spot, big thing he has to make sure is if it's under any threat that he has an extra pylon so he doesn't get supply blocked. Or can't spot it that like insto. Yeah, you know, even if Archaic's been playing a little bit of shoot 'em up games, he he knows Protoss versus Protoss. He's played enough of it. Yeah. Uh -oh. Um, um, so, I'm curious what Stu Blue's going to be doing next. Doesn't seem to be ready to expand yet. Second gate. Um, yeah. I, I like this. This is the Archaic's game to lose right now. Um, it just looks, everything looks cleaner. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing I, I don't like is I think the Archaic has missed at least one, if not two, probe cycles. And that is a mm -hmm. huge deal. He got the kill on the probe, which is nice. Yeah, I would agree. And he also sent uh, sent his scouting probe off quite a bit earlier. Yeah. So even that's a little bit of missed mining time at the port where it matters most. Yeah, but so bu far... just building, build them. If you build an extra, if he hadn't missed that, you just build, 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 and you're fine. A couple well placed chronos could catch him back up in the worker count. Um, that's the beauty of it. What's this extra probe? I'm not. I'm not understanding Stu Blues. Why would you send a... You know he's there. I don't understand this. I don't know what Stu Blues doing here. Uh, um, you know, he might still be figuring it out himself. Sometimes you have a game like that. Yeah, he's... Sent... I guess it's back to Scout. Okay. So we got Robo versus Stargate going for us now. Twilight. I like the Twilight. Um, mm -hmm. Has the Archaic seen the... The Archaic has not seen any... Um, Stu Blue has, though, seen the tech for Archaic, so it gives him a knowledge advantage quite a bit. Um, he uh, caught... He did Chrono Boost his probes and caught up. He's ahead in probes now. He's got much better saturation. And he's um, got an Oracle uh, ready to go out. Stu Blue doesn't have a... Doesn't have a lot of anti-air right now, so we're gonna have uh, to see the, what he does with it. Uh, Archaic is gonna be Archaic facing. does not. Yes, yeah. Stu Blue has the Oracle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. also is really poor anti-air, but we won't get into that, alright? Uh, yes. So. All right, here comes here comes Nice Blue Station Scouts. I'm here. Yeah. In the shadows. Oh, that. It, oh, All it's, right, it's turns around. It. Yeah, sees absolutely everything. But he doesn't, I do not think he see, saw the Oracle. Yeah, so he might be expecting something uh, like a Voyager or something a little later. Yes. So, Oracle is on its way. There's nothing the, in the main. Yeah, nothing exactly. The, the anti-air is at the ramp. Nope, the anti-air is walking across the map. It is not, it oh. is warping in, too. That Ooh, is, so... that's going to get some damage done. Yeah. But, so and, this I, is going to get these, some worker damage done. The these, other side, the, oh, and they're coming right back. Around. Yeah. I was actually uh, going to say, that actually saved him. He cannot make it up this ramp. These batteries... Nope, the batteries would not have finished in time, I think, if he would have just walked. Oh. Oh, man, this is the wrong... This is exactly wrong. Yeah. The, hey, you, look, a distraction! Yes. <laughs> the, the battery's finished now. He's got double battery. He's got battery overcharge waiting. He'll have enough. And he... He hasn't moved any of his workers back to the main mineral line, either. And here comes the Oracle again, although does more to scare than it does to actually hurt. Anyway, he still let's has see to... how this fight goes. We got double shield battery there. It's it's he's got yeah. away. Drop a force field. He just doesn't have enough there. No, no. But if you can get Oop. him to fight away from the shield batteries, that'd be nice. Yeah. But he's got to run back home. He's if you can get him to fight away for long enough to actually get health damage, that's the deal. Yeah, he he's got to pop away from this. This is and nothing. Is that... he gonna turn? Yeah, he's gonna turn. Oh no, 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 no! 
Ugh. Yeah, and there's a void right here. The, the Oracle got... This is going to be a 2 not the 2 0. You ever have trouble sleeping at night as a Protoss? Yeah. That's the question that comes up. Yeah, he lost his... Th this is... The Oracle, basically... Does he have... Yeah, he's got triple shield battery at his uh, his ramp. He, he's but got. He needs uh, something to actually cast the battery. He needs on. to. He needs to recall. He needs to recall, like right now. Yeah, I would agree. Shield battery is very good. Yeah, That's... sure can be. And a good thing to do once the overcharge starts up is just to back up for not very yeah. long. Yeah. All right. And he his two. Now we two are... uh, stalkers at um, at uh, mm -hmm. Stu Blue's base. Yeah, no. I mean, quite he a bit could, of damage. He warp stuff in back there. So we have we have a lot of dead probes between these two players, don't we? Yeah, it was Stu Blue's game, and those four stalkers warped in did enough to hold. Um, and supplies now, just about even. Yeah. Although with Stu Blue, with uh, Archaic having a five worker lead, there's more he can do to increase his armor lead. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. I. I don't. I don't think another attack can get anything more done than the last one did. Huh? Prismatic. Cool. Yeah. You know, I actually disagree. I think he can huh? pop up if he pops up the ramp real quick right now. Now. One thing I think might be wise, if he does go up the ramp, is to just keep going past. Yeah. Go yeah, up the main, on this. away from that battery. Oh, okay, I, that yeah. that's, that's not bad for him. No. And that, um, well, that keep... Oracle is just always moving around here. All right, we have the upward blink, and as I said, away from the shield batteries. Yeah. And once again, Archaic has to abandon his plans to get some defense there. He's got the single tipping away at the, uh... Oh, yeah, that stalker, uh... Yeah. That stalker Run! might want to reconstruct... Uh, uh, that um, stalker just stalked its last stalk. It did. This is an amazing back-and-forth game. Uh... Yeah, I think, I think they've both managed to throw each other off their footing, and they both want to be offensive, but neither of them wants to lose even more workers, so... Right. Uh, a cannon, it's weird, normally I'm not like, uh, gotta go yeah. forge, but a single cannon in each mineral line at below masters really, really is a... Actually, is a, if you got the minerals to share, to spare, and right now Stu Blue has a lot of minerals banked. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, he did not uh, quite manage to snap the prism there, came close though. Yeah, I now, think... Now, these stalkers have blink. So yeah. you have to keep a very close eye on that warp prism. Up, oh, up, oh, up. Uh, Artosis of yeah, there go. of Artosis pylons. There goes. Yep. You just got Artosis sized. Yeah. Um, All right, Stu Blue, uh, getting charged a lot later than last game, but he definitely does not like to be without that upgrade. I, I think charge is a great thing for him to have. It's, He's got a lot a of money. Thing. Exactly. He, well, specifically, a lot of minerals. Right. Now, if he adds a couple, you know, a little bit more gateways, and he's already got, what, uh, okay, six of them, so, yeah, he already is in position to actually get quite a few zealots off. Yeah, he needs more pylons, actually. Yeah, he's seeing that now. He can... uh, I believe the term is additional pylons. He needs to keep, uh, always, always be building workers. Build more workers, build more workers, build more workers. I like mm. that. Queue them up, even. It's yeah. not going to hurt anything. Drop Archaic. a ton of pellets, and... Arcade's had his third for a while. Stu Blue has just started his. Right, so. but Stu Blue's tech is... is way more advanced. <laughs> yeah, that's... It's interesting to think about. We, we do have a robot Robotics facility way. on the way, but... Or... Yeah. Robotics support bay. Robo bay. Robotics support bay. Right. Um, you know too many things that start with robot or star. You know. All right. The things yeah. I'd like to see is either one of them drop a dark shrine. There's going to be a single <laughs> observer on the map. 
Yeah. But that's a big I hear army. You there. That's a big army. It is and a big army. Dark. Once again, uh, once again, don't leaving just as gas sneaking through the back door. Yeah, don't yeah, go but... into the teeth of this ramp. That's not where you want to go. See that? Run away. Nope, yeah, see here, that? Run away. Goes, Next yeah. decision. Run away. Got to be careful with those choke points, like the but right uh, like up the, the main ramp. Rock, um, exactly. And there's nothing Force there yet. Him out get the... him now. Yeah. Oh, get him now. Jump him. Oh. No. You, you want to hop on him when he's as far away from any batteries as possible, or yeah. jump on the batteries, and the batteries are as far away from any army as possible. possible. Yeah. So right and now, the, he is, uh, he is the blocking those lots. batteries and finishing. Right. Ah. So the charge lots are a really good counter to the uh, the soccer ball. They indeed are. And Look at that immortal stay alive with the super battery. <laughs> I, I love immortals and batteries. It's yep, an old favorite of mine. He, he killed it, ran away. I think he takes... Yeah. That was a beautiful move but, by Stu Blue. And... Yeah. You know... I think you might want to get. Yeah, I mean, here comes here comes the cavalry. Through. That's what. Yep. That's what it might have been nice to wait for before, but nothing, nothing major lost there. I think this is good. We have the disruptor. Uh, oh, that's guy, one stalker, which isn't good enough. Nah, not in the current situation oh. anyway. And oh. there goes the goes warp the prism. prism. Yeah, that. Uh, that was I good. think. Yeah, going yeah I think the tidal waves build in here, or the snowball is snowballing, or yeah. the stalker like is stalking. I don't know. The stalker is stalkering. Yep. I, yep. I, I think there's nothing to defend the main base from these four void rays. No, not not with the mobility he's got with the void rays and the blank. And he can, yeah. if he needs to, he can just keep retreating. And the, the charge lot's coming in the front door. There's nothing. Oh, nothing man. there. Yeah. yeah. I I this think I think I think Stu Blue may have very well reached Super Scion level now. Saiyan or Scion? <laughs> you know. To tell you the truth, I don't actually care, but... <laughs> I like Super Saiyan level, I, I think that's great. Let's just say Sailor Scout level, okay? I mean, you know, might not be on the same coolness level, but to tell you the truth, I actually do mo know more about the story. Sailor Moon? Sadly enough. <laughs> well, you do have a daughter. Uh, yeah, also a wife. She's got that... You know, they, they re-released the Sailor Moon mangas with much, much better translations. So. That's an affront to humanity. That's a nice ball. Yes, indeed. Um. I mean. I don't think it's going to matter. If we were going with compensation points. Yeah. But oh, there's. Boy. Yeah, those shield everywhere. batteries, I think they're pretty much out of energy, aren't they? They are. Just about. And yeah, you see some of it being spent on those uh, retreating workers. Oh, but I now mean, Archaic has charge. So, yeah, well, he I mean, does not you know, have her. <laughs> he's gonna hold. <sighs> um, and you know his army right now is Garbo. So they're uh, <laughs> yeah, they're actually yet again even in supply. That's the amazing thing here. Look at Stu Blue's base. Oh man, <laughs> Stu Blue, Stu Blue, is a lad who knows what he wants, and he yeah. gets what he wants, and then he uses what he wanted. Um, I, I would like to point out that the his base is what when, when you describe Artosis Pylon. Uh huh. Um, Here, can we get a look back at Stu Blue's base? Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I mean, granted, you see the tasteless pylon overlapping with it a little bit. Mm, I don't think oh, so. Oh, triple robo. I, I I think that Stu Blue, and if he's not careful, his robotics units are going to dump into the same spot that that probe is stuck in. Mm, yes. Well, we got now. We got to see if the immortal comes out into the hole. Oh wow! Yeah, I mean, warp prisms can got... take care of that, but that takes a little bit of extra attention. <laughs> Yes, it does. There's yeah, nothing does that, worse than. I'm trying to figure out if that if that formation of gateways and robo facilities spells something. <laughs> there um, are those dark templars you wanted. Uh, yes. And Stu and... Blue, Stu Blue's got a, another observer on the way. Stu Blue Two doesn't dark have an observer though. right now. Yeah. He has no detection. Yeah, but it's a. I think it just popped, right? Uh, yes, it just popped. Yeah. 
All right. Well, listen. Yeah, the uh, these guys are gonna get surrounded. Yep. yep. And the capes fall. You know, I don't think we've seen a forge out of either side. No. Oh, up, oh, up, oh, double forge. You sure he's not in the channel? No, not in the channel with us. We got, we gotta, we gotta put the archaic in a soundproof booth, okay? Yeah, but you know, sixteen-minute forges is it, isn't. Um... Yeah, that's uh, that's not a lot of time you have to take advantage of the upgrades. Well, this game could go fifty minutes. It could. <laughs> and in which case, boy, lucky thing that our team game got canceled. Otherwise, yeah, we might be even more tired tomorrow. Yeah, um, I, I, there's no forges it's, for Stu Blue. And he, Stu Blue hasn't taken a, his gases in his natural. No, nope. um, or not, not not mining from them anyway. And there's even some uh, there's even some probes that are previously uh, no, he mining a, gas it, in the main that are just sitting there now because it's all mined out. Yeah. All right. So he's got a warp prism this time. That'll help a lot with those zealot reinforcements. And that's the thing. You have that ready. The zealots just Keep on showing up. Um, if and he sees this base to the south, he can just can't. He can just kill it. I, I think he's in a pretty good position, no matter what. And zealots, of course, are pretty good at outrunning uh, disruptor balls. Then you have the void rays that don't even have to worry about disruptor balls. Did he then you have the disruptors that just got destroyed and can't create any more disruptor too. balls. Then that was must have been a mistake. Yeah, he recalled so. to the base that was being attacked yeah. from the guys who were getting attacked. Yeah, and I have and that... called it several times that the the game is over, but I really think Stu Blue has it this time. <laughs> Double supply is usually indicative of something. <laughs> yeah, Ugh. I I'm having trouble telling exactly whose zealots are whose. This is why I was. Um, yeah. The, the darker ones are stew blues. Just think of it that way. Uh, I can I can tell which are which, but then I can also tell a Coke from a Pepsi. So, <laughs> you know. And we have another plural GG, and stew blue. That's yeah. Awesome. yeah. I, stew blue looked very polished for an Archaeo did not look as good as he's looked in the past. Whoa. So, all right. Wow, guys, let's bring him in. So, uh, is, is, oh, no, no, bring. headlock, headlock. Someone get the referee. Another, yeah, another. We have interference amazing. in this match. <laughs> all right, joining us now right. are the players. Stu Blue. Uh, so, I'm getting the impression that uh, Wednesday's match wasn't might might not have just been a fluke. What are your thoughts? Uh, I'm not sure. I was not expecting to win this game and not let him take any maps. You it, seems seems like you found something that works for you really well with this map, mass gateway work. Has that been something you've been practicing a lot, or is it just something you know kind of put in and it tends to work out for you? I think it just tends to work out for me. Okay. And. As as a stew blue, is there a reason you keep choosing purple? Uh, not really. I okay, know. I was just wondering. Uh, Archaic, got you back. I um, so Archaic, you're in the past. We've seen you a little bit sharper on your um, your timings. You missed a couple macro cycles that kind of put you behind stew blue. You think that's a little bit of rust, or did you are you just not feeling it today? Uh, I think it was absolutely rust, and also because I didn't have my purple. <laughs> <laughs> Stu Blue blocked him with the purple. If you can't yeah. pull off the gas steel, do the purple steel. That's the strategy for anyone in a tournament that doesn't restrict you to red and blue. Yes. Um, on the second game, I thought you were dead several times, but you fought back really nicely. Um, Not only that, but you repeatedly evened out the supply, even when you took all kinds of damage. Yeah, you so. you had advantage on on some of those games. You really played well from behind, showing uh, I I guess um, good natural talent. But there's a couple slip ups I, I was going to ask you about. Um, one was both of you forgot any sort of upgrades. The 16, 17 minute game, no uh, forges. Uh, 
is that is, do you think that's rust or is that kind of the your play style normally i think i was stressed out <laughs> just just got a just got a, a the pressure yeah, yeah the pressure I of stublo keep and then um you the thing that actually finally won him the game wasn't his zealot charge which was a lot but just the regular old void rays not having a counter did you expect him to go up to seven void rays or did you cuz your ground army would have beaten his ground army but um nothing he only had like six uh, stalkers shooting up. I think I was uh, more focused on the charge slots because of the first game where I completely got decimated. Yeah, but, yeah. little tunnel vision. I, yeah, I, th I think I got tunnel vision on that, and then I died to the void rays after, like, you know. Yeah, but I, I, mean, I, that... I think I would have. I, I might have uh, countered it if I scouted, but I was stressed out. Yeah, that definitely will happen when. When your opponent's in your face, it's harder to think. Um, gets you a little panicked. And then one last question. There was a recall in the last fight. Was that a misclick? Was that supposed to be an overcharge? Uh, no, I intended the recall, but uh, I <laughs> forgot that to, to click. So right okay. next to Yeah, because you recalled. You you took half your units out of the fight and then just fed them right back into Stu Blue's army. It didn't... Uh... Didn't go your way, really. Were you trying to recall to the second base, your natural, yeah. or are you going to go to the fourth? No. I, was, I was going to the second, my natural. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah I just, that, I just used my hotkey of Nexus. I, I'm a master of that. I actually hate that type of recall mechanic because I keep all my, um, all of my bases on the same uh, key hotkey, so when I go to recall, occasionally I, I've done that more the times old... than I'd like to admit. Old Warcraft Three Scroll of Town portal goof up. Yep, hit the wrong it goes town. Way back. Yeah, and then I have, right. a, I have one question for Stu Blue real quick. Uh, Stu Blue, uh, like I said, this was really to test you on your way, seeing how you're gonna go. Do you think that you can uh, take Code A now that you've beaten two of the higher end players up here? I think Noob Lord's the only one, probably that would still give you trouble. Uh, I think I can maybe put up a stand at least. Yeah, you, yeah. Um, but these two wins, yeah. you put yourself in nice playoff position. So, so not quite ready for ESL next year, but maybe the year right after that. Then is that yeah. correct? <laughs> yeah, mini max packs there. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, guys. We will see All you right, both guys. soon. GGs. Great. See Thank you guys you. next Thank time. You. GG. So who's next on the docket? All right. So yeah, we got lined players up. are ready. I mean, look, Vales. Vales, neutral. Vales, we can do if he's uh, oh. if Ghost Chance available, but I don't Wait. think Ghost Chance is there. Yeah, we yet. got two codessers who are in voice chat, but they're not. They're not playing lined up with each other. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, um, um. But then we can go then the uh, the other match. How about B? Van Rieren, yeah. Or Neutrophil can go too, but his opponent is not there yet. So. Right. right. Okay. I would say we can go. Um, we we want to take a second and see if, who we can yeah, grab. Let's, let's and take a, why don't you guys. Quick break. Let's take a quick break, figure out who's going to be playing next. Okay, excellent. All right. Be back in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Folks. FSL players, we're actually going to have. First, a quick little interview here. Actually, let's have Tempo hey, interview we you, break. and then we'll talk a little bit about the games. All right, all right. Let's play we got. Player rise. Team captain. My man. Hello, hello. Hi there. Hey, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. So that was uh, quite a match. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, no kidding. Just, uh, did you expect it to be that crazy? No, like, um, we had our plan going into it, but... Uh -huh. it oh, you want to introduce just... yourself? Sorry, sorry. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, I'm Neutrophil. I was the pink Terran there. Mm -hmm. um, we had plans going into it, uh, and we just kind of let it kind of let, let it go, you know? Yeah. And um, uh, we were expecting, like, huge cheeses from the other team. We were scared of all wins and stuff, so mm -hmm. we were all defensive at first. Yeah. And I kind of ignored my team and decided to... Um, Kind of just go, go ham with the, I saw that with the stock. Yeah, so um, <laughs> yes. I have to thank uh, War Bunnies there. He yes. was uh, our Protoss, I think. 
-hmm. And he, he kind of just took charge there. He was shot calling. He was helping with the macro. Really? And yeah, he was just uh, kind of leading the team. And I was just kind of tunnel vision him, I think. But wow. Well, that was actually uh, quite the game. I mean, d did you count how many nukes actually went off that game? Because I couldn't keep track after no. nuke, like six. <laughs> <laughs> I just kept spamming nukes. Yeah. <laughs> but um, our teammates, uh, they definitely carried uh, their part. Um, and we just kind of played a macro game there. I think. Yeah, it ended up being uh, quite the game, right? And, um, geez, just back and forth as far as, like, gutting economies, right? I remember um, it was uh, the Mutas. The Mutas mm -hmm. coming through from instability, right, too, like, uh, as a surprise. Uh, and just absolute craziness. Like, how do you even focus on one thing at this point, right? So what was yeah. the highlight of the game for you, though? I mean, besides the win, <laughs> <laughs> I think the first nuke was pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. um, but afterwards, I think it was just like our team synergy because like everything was really like clicking, and especially towards the end, mm -hmm. where we were all just like make, uh, making our different armies, and we were yeah. having like different things to counter the things. So like when I had the ghosts in, we were scouting what they had, and mm -hmm. we were just kind of talking about what we should do to counter like the BCs okay. and just their armies. And I think the most satisfying part was just having everybody like really. Um, like really like mesh well together yeah. right and just the synergize it felt like you kind of hit your stride at some point right mm -hmm. so hot dang uh, we decided to nickname you nucrophil after that <laughs> so <laughs> i was gonna say have you been liking at least uh playing in the uh fsl so far uh yeah fsl's been going really good um tournaments uh we have matches like every few weeks but um we get a lot of time to prepare for them and mm -hmm. we get to know our opponents and it's just nice. a really fun time yeah right it seems like you guys are pretty tight uh, mm -hmm. already just uh by you looking at the way y'all have been <laughs> interacting and and as far as this event too right just being here um when's the last time you've had a chance to get to like some kind of a land event to actually uh I see think, people and hang out. I think it was the last uh, Sidestorm Cup. Really? The yeah. one that was in Fairfax. Yep. Okay. I remember that. But uh, yeah, I haven't really played in any like land tournaments since. Land's all right. It's uh, been quite the uh, crazy past couple years, right? Um, mm -hmm. And it's so nice to see that even at an event like this where we have like some of the top players, we can have a really fun game like that, you know? And I think we still have more to go. So uh, yeah. I'm going to let you get back to it. Thank you. Know? you. So uh, congratulations, man. That was awesome. Yep, good games. Yeah, all right, good games, guys. I believe we'll uh, cut to a little bit of a break before we end up going into... Uh, I think we're going to go straight in. All right, we, we got a little rock. video to play, so okay. a little bit of a cool story to this one. So we talked to some of the pros. They're going to play alongside a couple of the FSL players in a 2v2. We've got Detweiler from okay. the group stage and um, Misery, a well-known member of the StarCraft community. They're going to be playing alongside the two youngest members of the FSL, uh, eight and nine years old, respectively, I wow. believe. It's going to be Chi and Pone and Little Reaper. So we've got a little bit of an intro video to play just to kind of show you those players, and then we'll be able to hop into game. Hey, guys, we've got our 2v2 team here. Our very first, we've got uh, an exciting match here. Why don't you introduce yourself, guys? Uh, Misery? Uh, the Detweiler. It's going to be an exciting match. All right, welcome back. Uh, we're going to be jumping into this Pros Anjos 2v2. We got the Detweiler and Chi and Pone, you just saw them on the video, uh, versus TVP, who is actually um, Misery, Misery yeah. and Little Reaper. Now, did you know that me and Chi and Pone actually have a... Actually, guys, we are here. We're going to get started. Mr. War Bunnies is here with me. We're waiting for Hyper Turtle, but until then, we do have Veils and uh, Ghost Chant ready to get, get started. Yeah. Let, uh, let's while we do wait it. for yeah, why don't we talk about you know the the FSL you know situation here? What what's what's important about this? Like what is this deal? Uh, the FSL or the the matchup match we're talking? Veils versus Ghost Chain. Oh. How important is? It? I'm, I'll show the. Uh, let me show I the think, standings maybe. I think that this matchup is a mini uh, mini Playoffs. playoff game. <laughs> I think that the winner of this game has a, a pretty an inside track to making the playoffs and the loser is going to have quite a bit of catch up to do yeah uh, do you want to bring up the, the standings and we can talk about why yeah let's do that I, i'm not sure if this is updated but the one on the spreadsheet 
we can just look at Liquipedia. Usually Liquipedia has it updated pretty well. So let's go look yeah. at that. All right, yeah. so now scrolling down to the code S. There you go. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Okay, so um, Veils is 3-0, and Instability is 3-0, and Dark Menace 3-0. and um, So... Yeah, both of them are undefeated mm -hmm. with with yeah. uh, Ghost Chant losing just one map and Veils un hasn't even lost a map. Right. Um now I, the, none of them have none of these four have play, obviously played each other. So um they've been kind of beaten up on hurting diamonds from Allegan quite a bit. But um this this matchup is the top guys so far and uh ghost chant is he's he's up and coming i think that he can push for the championship this year veils this will be his first like real test and so i'm you very excited to see the real test was neutrophil mm -hmm. yeah i i'm gonna be honest i don't think neutrophil played a little rusty i don't think he was yes, he in did. his a he game did. He did. He played. He played. You know the same thing that Archaic did when he said, "I've been playing a lot of other video games," and yeah. then his timings are. You know, StarCraft's very weird. I I play very very slow, so it's very noticeable for me. But I've noticed with other players, if you're not r really in the flow and you haven't played a lot, just a couple seconds here and there, by the the five minute mark, you're down five ten army supply, and that's all it takes. You know. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, I guess my only point there is, you know, when you're talking about the big test, yeah, it's the multi-champ versus, you know, Ghost Champ, yeah. who uh, I think he's missed the playoffs the couple last couple of times. So he has, but he's been he's looked really smooth these last little yeah. bits. So well, let's bring him in. Let's go talk to these guys. Yeah, let's I'm very excited. In. Ghost Champ is uh is already on video. Veils is hopping on now. So let me bring in Ghost Champ. All right, Ghost Chant is here now. You guys can ask the tough questions. Veils is hopping on video. I'll add him short. Oh, there he is. Veils is here. Ghost Chant, I'll ask you right off the bat. You're undefeated this season. Big test right here. How you feeling? Annoyed. <laughs> mm. That's StarCraft for you. Yeah, I was going to say, that's how every StarCraft Terran player always feels. Yeah, but but I don't know. Um, I, I'm, I'm always on the periphery of the conversation. Bales this, instability that, neutrophil that. So, a little annoyed. A little you, th annoyed. You, you think that, um, I, I think that you're, uh, I think you're an inside track to be one of the top contenders this year. I honestly think that you've made a, a jump in your gameplay this season, and I honestly, I think that, like I said, this matchup right here, will go a long way to determine which one of you ends up at the real upper echelons. You, I don't, I don't want to oversell this match, but you two have been playing some of the best, if not the best games this year of the group. Dark Menace is very skilled, but uh, you guys seem like you've been putting more time in than anyone else. I'd say that. Um, do you feel like, uh, this match is the same for you that you think that you two kind of sitting on top right here if you win it kind of puts your stamp on the uh code s that's kind of what i'm going for and uh i i, I kind of this, this one's kind of important to me kind of a because i'm always on the periphery of the conversation and b this is my weakest matchup so i'm trying to come out and show something good here because historically this is my weakest matchup is the mirror so TVTs uh, always can be difficult. Um, Veils, you say, kind of same thing to you. You're the up and comer. Um, I, I, you really put your stamp on the code S this season. But Ghost Chant, I think, is definitely your toughest opponent so far. Uh, yeah, how maybe. are you feeling about it? Maybe. I think um, I'm looking forward to it, but I'm also a bit. Bit the same really. The TVT is probably feeling like my weakest match at the minute. Uh, I've not really been playing for the last month still, so I need to get back into it really. So, I... 
<laughs> this one might be a tough one. But yeah. that's underselling the hype. Um, I, I I wouldn't want to be going in unprepared against Ghost Chant. I uh, he, he's quite skilled. So, uh, David, no. you got any questions? Um, I mean, we've covered pretty much the story of this. We got a couple players who have proven a lot, but this is going to be a chance to prove a lot more. TVT, tricky matchup. Lot can go wrong in a very short amount of time. I'm definitely looking forward to this. I, I want to see what the two of you can do with it. Yeah. Um, and, uh, of course... Uh, I think the winner of this is going to be top, um, and not guaranteed, but almost guaranteed a spot in the playoffs. So, um, like I said, I, I hope that both of you are prepared. Ghost Chance seems a little bit more focused and ready. Vales, if you're not on your game, I think it's going to be a quick 2-0. So, hope you're, uh, hope you focus in. I'm ready. Yeah. No pressure. Let's do it. KJ, we ready to go? Yeah, we're ready to go. This is going to be fun, guys. Lobby. This is going to be fun. Good luck, gentlemen. Yep. We'll see you on the other side. Good luck. Yeah. <clears throat> Everyone's still here? All right. Oh. So I took him out. Yeah. I, you know, there's I, one I, new story here. Ghost Chant yeah. is annoyed that he's not considered one of the best. And I, that's mostly because the last two, three seasons, he wasn't. But I, I actually love the fact that he's annoyed. I, There's I, nothing scarier than a Terran with something to prove. <laughs> I, I think that Ghost Chant is... Uh, I think he's... I don't want to say favored, but I think he's uh, one of the better players lately. His game play Yeah, you're really improved. a big Ghost Chant on this, so... We'll I, I have been. I have been his... It's been it's been looking smooth, but Vale's always looks smooth, and I, I don't. I think he might be doing a little serial on us. Oh, mm. I haven't been practicing. I haven't been. I don't want to call that to his face, but are you sure you haven't been practicing? You don't have 500 hours in this month. Oh, time to start. Yes, indeed. And what do we do when we start? Well, we go down to the lower right, where we have the yellow Terran, and his name is. And then we take a trip to the upper left, where we have a red Terran. He is called... Alright, so there's different frames of thought when it comes to, you know, competitive mentality. Some of it's very... Some people, it works for them to be very chill, not put a lot of pressure on themselves, not put a lot of stake in it. And then you have the people who just want it. <laughs> and both of those can backfire. Sometimes you can take people too lightly. Or sometimes you can set your out, yourself up to be a little bit too tilted. So, very different style of interview, and we're about to see possibly two different styles of Terran, too. We have the uh, we have a double guess on both sides. It is exactly mirrored and exactly mirrored and. Uh huh. Uh. Very heavy duty. Ketchup versus mustard here. Red versus yellow. I, I the like eternal these, conflict. I like these colors a lot. Much easier to differentiate. <laughs> they do. Uh, I don't mind. I don't mind very close colors. Like it, when it, one's a Zerg and one's a Protoss. Like I, I can tell the mm. units apart real easy. Now, true enough. We both went uh, Reaper, and so yep. they both uh, finished their wall. Yeah. I think they both want to see what the other is doing. And what the other is doing is pretty much what the first is doing. Factory yep. went down a little bit fast. Everything's tiny, a tiny little bit. smoother for, uh, yep, for Ghost Chance, a little smoother. And mm -hmm. that's what I was saying. The smoothness of gameplay. Yeah, his mule was faster. Everything's just a little smoother. And that, mm -hmm. I find yep. that that really those little bit of smoothness really adds up snowballing his, and you you talk his about how way, important uh oh, go ahead. his reaper is 90 percent across the map mm -hmm. uh ghost chant other ones hanging out and doesn't yeah. hurt to have a defensive reaper yeah that, that's it is that's ready it'd be interesting putting him defensive there is not going to get a draw yes but ghost chant has just a natural advantage they'll both heal up yeah. 
Now it's 2v1, but he can yeah. see what the other one's doing. Well, not natural advantage, defender's advantage. He can reinforce a lot quicker. Right, but what I'm saying is Ghost Chant gets to see what the other one's doing. Right. Now, on the Ghost I'm... Chant side, we also have definitely an earlier... Uh, Lost Griefer. Yep. I think Ghost Chant saw that his is earlier, but... Now they're both kind of stuck into... Now it's again 2v2. Right. Hellion's faster for... Go, uh, yeah. And Vale's. Vale's getting the Stargate out. Yep. Oh, he can delay this, so that's going to that's gonna nullify the fact the Command Center started earlier. He does have an SCB uh, on the way so. right I away think it's, covered by the... I think, it, I think it's still a benefit to him. It, it just... Yeah, just it's still ahead. He had, he had the SCV ready to go and, and the Reaper's And he's going to have... Him. He, instead of going for a uh, Hellion, he's got the much, much more powerful uh, Cyclone. Cyclone. Yeah. Yep, the one that can keep its distance. Yeah. Yeah, the, the Cyclone's just an Definitely infinitely better Definitely seeing a lot on. of focus on mobility right now. Yeah, this is uh, both very... They're both control is very good right now, I would say. And I would say that... Uh, does that... Does that hurt the... No, it's, it does not. All right. Um... Well, the... I can think of a pile of debris that's not going to know what hit it. Yeah. Um, everything's perfectly mirrored right now, though. Uh, well, it... less. The, orbital, uh... the orbital command's going to finish a little bit sooner, obviously, for Ghost Chant, so he'll get his mules. Worker counts matched. Veils with an extra supply depot ahead. Or a couple, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how uh, important that extra supply depot is. Um, well, the third it all depends center. how quickly you actually have the units to eat up that supply. The, the third command center comes down. Uh, oh, and Raven from both sides, too. And that's been a big topic of discussion since the Raven at least is planned to be pretty heavily reworked in that patch. And that discussion has been, you don't really see a lot of Ravens against Zerg or Protoss, but in Terran at the highest level, it can uh, turn the tide instantaneously. Third on location for Veils. Yes, indeed. Um, I don't like this Cyclone out on the map. I think there's not enough with it. Maybe just poke in. There could be a lot of damage quickly. Yeah, see those Reapers. Yeah. I mean, they got to look at what's going on, but... <laughs> yeah. And the Cyclone, Cyclone in down the Cyclone. I love it. Yep. Yep, I, I didn't. I like the two Reapers to take a peek, but yeah. um, he'll see that his third's not on location. But I don't think he can poke oh. in and take any much more of a look. Yeah, um, I mean he's got a lot of army, but a lot of that army is still en route. Yeah. Is... So he's just kind of skimming the surface. Sim starts for. Sim starts for Vales. Mm -hmm. I think Vales is going to go here. I think he smells a little bit of blood yeah. in the water, and I think he has Just an has opening. to wait for his reinforcements. As long as he's not yeah. going in single file, he can potentially do a lot he, of damage. He pulled the boys, but he left them at home. Is that a miss rally, or what What, what are the boys doing there? Uh, oh, you that, know, that boys, was a miss rally. <laughs> boys do what boys will do, and boys still, will be boys. He That was a miss rally, yeah. Oh, indeed. Boys, he could have, I think he could have gone, it was only one tank to two, the second tank was kind of out of position. Mm -hmm. I think he could, he could have jumped there. We know. Yeah, a little bit of cold have, feet, and then we got, we got more, more runaway boys. Yeah, what are they doing? Go home, go home, boys. Well, but his third's on location. Hopefully he fixes that rally right now. And uh, Ghost Chance is still up. Yeah, Both it's still on high ground. Lines. Both yeah. his mineral lines are oversaturated a little bit. Well, not that yeah. bad, but the 22... I, 20, it's 24 I think they're both zero. feeling the pressure. I think we can tell. Yeah. But... 24 still, is... They maximum. both avoided... They both avoided getting hit hard. You know, no Stim, no major damage Stim yet. Stim just started for Ghost Chance, so... Yeah. Stim's almost complete for Veil, so yeah. there'll be a minute, maybe... There goes that Cell Naga Watchtower. Stim that uh ooh ooh this ghost, this... ghost chat with supply advantage yep but he's it's all about positioning all about positioning and he sieges them yep oh just in time too i think oh yeah that could have been uh, that could have been a disaster been yep 
Uh, yeah, what are they? You know, they call uh, they call Terran uh, versus Terran the chess game. I, you he know what? He's going to sneak all about around. Position. Yeah, and that's the thing. Tanks are tricky to reposition. Yep, and he he's going to get right in this yeah. spot right here. This is a beautiful now, spot can, to be. And once he plants those tanks down, yep, he has stim versus unstim, and that is a huge deal. Oh, he wasn't repairing. And... Oh, man. That, that's yeah. nice interference matrix. It's nice, but there isn't much to take... Okay, ah, I'm to take advantage. Yep. Yeah. Okay. But... Is it he even fails even and took a supply lead there, which is a, a big deal. A slight one. But he was behind. Yeah. Those ravens come, came in real clutch. That was really nice control. Absolutely. Um, he was ready for that part. But Yeah, yeah the so, two of them are going to have to be very careful to keep tabs on each other's positions. And you see, I'm at shield starts up. Do we have any medevacs at all on either side? I don't know. No, don't there's no medevac. So. <laughs> we have... Uh, definitely have some bruised done. and battered marines here and there. Combat shields is done Ghost for Ghost has Vails. taken the Zalnaga watchtower and seen whether he can take up a good position. No, he, he better run. You yep. better run! And once again, you know, keeping keeping that one marina had to test the waters. Ooh. He, yeah. he held. I think he, I think he was fortunate there. I think that yeah. I think that could have been overrun if he if he had a full idea of what he was up against. And look you know, at Ghost those Chan boys. Ghost Chan have... has his boys just hanging out now as well. Terrence, it's 7.15. Do you know where your boys are? Yeah. Oh, there they this go. Is, yeah. Terran's <laughs> one of the... Terran's the race that hits F1 the most. Yeah, I could see that. I, I don't... I, I find it very interesting that they're both finding themselves a little bit of trouble. The two of them are very much keeping an eye on, e on each other's positioning for good reason. It's TVT. One, one out of position moment. That's all it has to take. Yep. Um, Ghost Chance fourth is faster, up in mining. And he, uh, but Vales has a quite the um, worker lead. I don't know. Yeah. I like that Ghost uh, Ghost Chan also has this three Marine hit squad on mm -hmm. the kind of the left part of the map, just to make sure there's no move-outs there. Avails with uh, with the armor upgrade, and with another on the way. Yeah. But, uh, yep, Ghost Chant just evens that out for the moment. This is, I mean, this is the this is a real, uh, this is a real tightrope walk. Yeah. On one, you know, Oh, I don't think these guys are going to last long, but... No, that's not where you wanted to be. But the tanks will see... Rest of his army, up. yeah. Nice position, able to... Uh... Absolutely. And this is a map, you know, dips dips and uh, rises. It's all up and down, up and down, and more boys. More naughty boys. Uh, is, there a, is there a rally? I'm going to go check. It, yep, is. it is. It's rallied from the natural. The natural rallied there, yeah. Nope, and the the all oh, his rally is there for some reason. That's where his rally is. Yep, probably was trying to right click from a different building while the yep. while the command centers were still uh, still there. And now does he notice? He's got his army checking on the boys. Yep, and he's got three marines that can actually stem in and actually do quite nope. a bit of damage. Okay, one, right one of them one of them still sitting there. The rest are moving, and you know what that means, bunnies. What? It means the boys are back in town. You know what? He's left his... I wonder if this is intentional on his part. Uh, I don't know, but whatever it is... Little... Oh, man. He just completely lost control of the air there. Those Vikings uh, <laughs> were just slaughtered. Yeah, but... He, he still... It's... He is... Um, Ghost Chance up 11 to 4 Vikings, so... And he's got one raven, so, uh... Mm-hmm. I don't... Uh, yep. I, Ghost Chan Ghost Chan has the aerial advantage and maxed out, but Vale's not far behind. We are going right. to the late game here. Yeah. 
Both of them respect each I still would like other. to see these three Marines. Can they see that? I'm going to check. They cannot see the fourth base. They're just outside the fourth bases. They're just there to see if anything leaves, but oh, not they, seeing if they anything can comes see, in. They can see if he looks. and it, it Whoa! He can see that the guys are cover, uh, using the geyser, but he can't see the... Uh, the... Can't see the oversaturated minerals? No, he can't see the geyser itself. He can see the guys walking out of the geyser. That it's reminds weird. me reminds me of the times before they adjusted that count, uh, where you know you'd saturate up to twenty four workers because twenty four is the maximum you can saturate while still getting any advantage. But each one above sixteen gives less uh, less. gives That's lots a... of a push. Ooh, look at this! It's a race to see All who right. can get to position. And yeah, well, it looks like most chance. he has to have the high ground, so I think Vales is right to back off immediately. All of these little pits here, you know? Yeah. I'd like to see more production slap down on both sides. They're both maxed out. They both I have a ton of money. I wouldn't mind a tiny bit of harassment to them. But they're they're not giving they're not giving each other a lot of time to blink. You see now these marines are just Possibly happenstance oh, into uh and oh <laughs> it being super useful. Uh yeah. You know, prevented a little bit of production from going down, that's for sure. Of course, yeah. they're not moving ahead and sniping the rest of them. Nope, I, I... But, like I said, I'd like to see this is the time of game when you're both getting 3,000 minerals that you need to put in so that you could remax. Um, yeah, well, you want... Exactly. You want all the... You want as many extra production structures as you can. So the moment every Marine you have goes down to tank fire, you can replace them almost instantly. Yeah... And look at their banks. Yeah, I know. Yeah, plenty, plenty of minerals, plenty of gas. They are ready for the long haul, but like you said, yeah. this TVT can potentially end in a dime. Yeah. Again, Vales is uh, moving through, but because of that scouting, I think I, I think that Ghost Chance ready, and yeah, he sees him like, oh, nope, not mm -hmm. there. He's going to yep. rotate up. Of them he are gonna might be able to rotate him right okay. here. Yeah. Can he siege? Yeah. He can. Oh, this is going to oh be difficult. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Veils the high ground and with the aerial advantage. Uh, no. Uh, Ghost Chant had the aerial advantage. Right did now. He? he did. Now, now I mean, the right other. Now. <laughs> yeah, now the uh, Viking. We got, we got one. Yeah, we got one guy with the Vikings. And we got one guy looking to possibly take the, uh, the fast Vespin gas or the. Purple, purple gas, high yield gas, high yield gas, gas, yeah. heat, rich. Gas, gas, rich, rich gas, rich vestment guys. All right, thank you. Yes. That would have been bugging me until I googled it. <laughs> um, now this, now this is the time where having the more veils actually has slightly more production, and this is where mm -hmm. it's really kind of going to shine. And and I think we have liberators on the way for veils, which is a really clever thing yep. to have. Um, if you've got if you got the Vikings and Chuck. Yep. He's gotta move his uh, Marines yeah. forward. His Marines yeah, can fight there. Ghost Town is losing more Vikings. Down to two of them. They're both pretty hurt. Yep. But here and here come those liberators. Lib yep. Owned by the libs. Oh, we have some hardcore liberation here. Yep. Ooh, things are not looking good for our oh. yellow Terran. This definitely gives Ketchup a, a bit of a boost. Oh, pretty quick on that. He caught the tanks just as they were sieging and gets around yeah. the liberation zones, but they're not going to last much longer. Landed Vikings doing their work. Yeah, but they're that resets. Hop up again. Yeah. That resets the tank count. Does indeed. Vale's still with a supply lead and a lot more production structures. Yeah. And and an upgrade lead to him, although that's about to get matched up. We got a lot of just yeah. non stop carnage here. Yeah, this is He he did... the Ghost Marines... Chat just, just doesn't have an answer for those uh for those liberators. liberators, not with all those Vikings in front of them. Right. So... what he can do is this. Hey. Okay. Yep. You know, yeah. you plant the liberators down. Yeah. You can move around them if needed. He should. He shouldn't have sieged. Still, yeah. The, the that, siege. That, that sticks them in place. 
Yeah. And those death circles. And we might have Ghost Champ being even more annoyed now. Yeah. Um, but he's clearing. He is... <laughs> oh, wow. And look they're at long distance those... mining yeah, look... each other's... <laughs> ah, ah. Look at all those guys they managed to catch on the way out. Now, if, uh... Now, if Ghost Chan is really clever, he'll build a refinery on that... <laughs> on that Vespin geyser. Who's... Oh, Vales is going to take the gold. Yep. Um... Well, we're running out of play... You know, we're running out of places to take that don't have, uh fast mining, you know? Yeah. Uh, and look at all... A lot of command centers down. I don't see them getting changed into orbitals or planetaries yet, though. They're not. They're gonna... I, okay, there's one being changed into a planetary. Uh, which one? The one uh, that's gonna die. Yes, the dead one. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's a lot of mules. He could just... Man. No, no, that's a planetary, that one, so... Yeah, these... I mean, these command centers are, you know, they're just kind of domes right now. And they, not... um, Ghost Chan actually sees the uh, yeah, uh, the attempt to take the gold by... Right. and is moving there to take it. And looks like he... Yeah, it doesn't look like that orbital's got any chance to get away either, so... No, oh, and he could keep moving forward. He could. He's going to. Yeah. All right. This is, this is TVT right here. This is the kind of TVT that makes me exhausted watching it. Yes. Oh, man. You see, he's got he's got the Viking advantage, but not, not well, quite as this much. Is, this out. little hit squad's going right. to definitely get it taken out, but... Yeah, as long as, as, long as he's quick to replace him. Yeah, his gold is definitely going to go some, out. But then this... Got some this, coming to play. He's going to take yeah, out... So, you take you take my gold, I'll take yours. But it's not like there's a lot of other places to hit. All they uh, all they've got they can take is these really oh, vulnerable. If, I know that uh, I know that Ghost Chant can't see this, but if he ran up, oh he, he Vales reacts because he knows. Hey, wait a second! Oh, if he man. runs up here, I don't have anything defending up here now. Right. And this map gets it gets a little nuts. Nuts um, indeed. He did turn. He did turn those into orbitals. Yep. Right. And He's got to stay they... away from those tanks on the high ground, but. And it's gonna take try to take the gold again, but yeah. there's units here is... for Ghost Chant keeping right. an eye right on right it. Right now, Vales Keep... has decent supply lead. Those too. are some big money splashed on those tanks. Oh, absolutely. The, the, the Viking, not the Vikings, the Marines, kind of single filed in there. Vikings so landing some... with their anti-mechanical damage. Yes. That's a big army from Ghost Chant headed right up the middle. We'll see. Oh, yep. Did I hear snipes? Ghost Chant. Ghost Chant sieges first. That's big. It is. Oh, and we he's gonna those... wipe this army. Yeah, I don't. Oh, think that was those... the Thors that were making that noise. Yeah. Um, I don't know if, if Thors are. I mean, Thors what? are generally a good unit, but I don't Thor... know. Thors are nice, but they're also slow. And they don't walk into and... tank really well. Right. Tanks do tanks do some nice bonus damage against the Thors, enough to nullify their uh, armor anyway. Yeah. Wow. Bio is you know peak upgrades on both sides, and they're working on their uh, both factory and starport attack. And what we're seeing right now, yeah, again and again and again, they're both trying to take those outer expansions generally getting wiped out immediately and ghost chan especially is starting to run low on resources here and about to lose another command center they're just gonna long just i like this just long distance mine it he's got yeah, the, why not he's got 74 workers they get to carry a little bit extra each time yeah it, he doesn't have any other spot to stick them absolutely so... and i mean you know what happens if he loses those workers frees up some supply to make some more troops right all Ghost he's... Chant has been pretty much stifled, though. He actually needs. Yeah. Um... He's gonna be. He's gonna be running out of gas pretty soon. Well, running out of minerals yeah. mostly, but yes. Yeah. And Vales has just been a monster this game. Yeah. But this uh, this is really Vales almost maxed out yet again with you know more tanks now that. The nice thing with the Thors, they can definitely help keep the Vikings away, but... Yeah. You know, so can other Vikings. 
Yeah, I'd, I'd right. like to see some of the lips. high ground here. Is he going to plant it? He's Ooh, got a yeah. yeah, that's a good runaway by. Uh, it was for a moment. I I don't I. I don't think there's going to be much more room to run. Yeah. And we see we see a little brief assault on the gold, but it looks like those troops are needed elsewhere. Yeah, I think Dagger, this is the... Daggering those tanks, but he's fallen further and further behind. Yeah, this is the last push, the last hurrah. He doesn't have any money. He's at less than half the army supply. Mm -hmm. It It's... Uh, he's going to be able to come and take this planetary, and with that... He'll be down Q, to half Q base. Blue is making a strong observation. TVT is too, too long. Okay. <laughs> hey, try it in Brood War, pal. All right. Yeah. And that's... Yeah, that... He doesn't, he doesn't even have the money to make another, uh, another command center. So, this is... Uh, oh, he's got yeah, one floating out. GG. That was... That was intense. That was. <laughs> oh, oh, balancing on the, the needle. Game one. That's the most action-packed TVT I've seen in FSL. Oh, easy. That was that was the clearly the best two Terrans you've had, putting on a, a Maru versus Innovation level uh, back and forth. That was that wonderful. Was just slamming each other. <laughs> Insane. And not a, not a single drop into each other's mineral lines. Nothing. These guys just wanted to punch. Yeah, that was some <laughs> high-level TVT. I gotta it was. It, what, in, in, the thing is, with TVT, it's so easy to throw. There was no throw there. There wasn't like, oh, man, that's, oh, that he's was, walking into this. No, that was that a was... gradual denial and eventual uh, overpowering. And it was beautiful position. All, all, both mm. players really... M the movement of their units was really beautiful. Like, one guy would head up and he they'd have guys planted so they never got caught with their pants down and... All with, it, all was with one or two units ahead of the others just to keep tabs on everything. Yes, that 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 might have been the best um, display of evenly matched skill we've seen in the FSL um, in at least two seasons. That was really well done, both yeah. players. He could have gone and, either way. I mean, the veils, you know, looked yeah. a little sketchy in the beginning. And yeah, then he, 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 yeah, he, and then he just kind of powered through. His macro was was really good, and he had the uh, it, resource advantage, right? Yeah, yes, he had the resource advantage, and he, his upgrade timing was perfect. It, it really helped yeah. him gain those little edges. But Ghost Chan had a nice lead there for a while. He was very uh, active the, with his marine medevac uh, mm -hmm. tank movement. Even against the Liberators, that was really good. It, that was, it was impressive. Yes, it was beautiful all the way around. Yeah, you know, that, was, that was pretty impressive. Don't step sure. in the circle, and he did not. Yeah. Yeah. And then the circle moved. Yeah. So. Very <laughs> impressed with both of them on that. That could have yeah. gone either way. It was just a couple of bad fights towards the end, and then the resource advantage. But anyway. Game and you know two, what? Right? I, the thing is, I don't even know if there were bad fights. I think it was the resource advantage, so... It was it was a gradual starvation. Now yeah. we're on a very different map this time, much less wide open. Yeah. So once again, they're going to have to keep track of position, but very different style of positioning in this one. Yep, much more straight up the middle. Mm -hmm. And the 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 bases aren't as far apart to the first four. Um, then getting the fifth and sixth, then we'll start okay. seeing that pull apart. Where in the last one, the yeah. fourth is mm -hmm. the one that's you know, one of the right. fourth is the far rich away Vespin from the guys third. Are, got a got a couple of rich Vespin guys in this one, but they're at least kind of in separate sides of the map, even if they're harder to defend. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, Ghost Chance asking asking for a second or two. Probably I adjusting might... his control because he did have some miss rallies there, right? His SCVs yeah, the wrong way. Did. They, they both had these really disobedient SCVs. But that, yeah, but they... you know, with Ghost Chant, one thing I did notice too is his uh, starport uh, mm -hmm. was not rallied. Like it was uh, in some of the factories, it was staying at home, right? So there's yeah. a weird the rally issues going on. 
if your opponent and you are standing in each other's faces, that can make it really hard to <laughs> even find a moment just to correct those little things. Yeah, it was just non-stop action, that's why. It was a long TBT, but it was not boring, that's for sure. No, yeah, awesome. that was that Take was not away, a there was there were no stalemates. All right, we are on data C. Data C. Data C. So, this one plays a little bit more into TBT drop play, so Absolutely. All right. On the left, we have the ketchup color tearing up one game. He is Veils. And on the right, in the mustard branding, he is Ghost Champ. All right. Got a couple of no nonsense Terrans who want this bad. I, uh, so I'm, I'm do you see the shenanigans? See... Yep, I... and I was just about to say, you know, kind of wondering, are they going to want to do that same kind of match again, which is really draining? Or, you know, especially especially the one who's a little bit ahead, you know, yeah, see, gonna see if he can take a different style of game here, go for the surprise. I feel like if you... And there is not a, there's not a ketchup... There is not a mustard scout out yet. There is not a ghost chance scout. The the thing about it is it is oh it is going to be two racks. Mm -hmm. Um. Now I'm guessing he's going to check it out once his first reaper delivers. Right. He went reaper first last time. The thing about second gas is a little later. Hmm. These marines. That's Although further they're kind back. Of far apart. Yeah, I was gonna say I. I guess Reapers. I guess if, I guess if he catches it's, one of them, <laughs> it's got to be Reapers. But his gas mm -hmm. was late. What is it that it's supposed to be a little earlier on that? I'm not. I guess I'm not a TBT expert. Uh, yeah, no, it's look at the it's gas. Marauders. Oh, Ooh, right, oh, that's Marauders. Yeah, he, won he has the wall bad, off. Guys. Marauders do extra damage against most structures. Uh, but the the thing is that the man, this is we have a third. He, you know, he is not going halfway here. He is planning to hit, and he is planning to hit hard as early as possible. Already got concussive shells being researched. Oh, he's going, and this is d disastrous for, uh, if he would have gone straight up, right through the middle. Uh, yep. And, There's or, nothing at I home. mean, honestly, if he'd gone, yeah, if he'd gone the northern path, he would have learned a lot. He is starting his command center. Already a marauder. Can cancel it. Yeah. Cancel, 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 He knows cancel, what's cancel. going on now. I don't think he... Well... <laughs> oh, and the ultimate insult. Oh, yep, the SCV has killed a Reaper. Yep. All right. He, yeah. He's got his one barracks. And, and he's one building factory. A, yeah, he's got to drop more production facilities. He's supposed to drop a, a bunker right away on this. Oh, yeah, that was what yep. I was going to say. Yeah. That, oh, that supply depot won't last very long, even while it's being repaired. The Cyclone? That will, that will really help, but... Man. I mean, there's different ways to go about it, but I think a bunker... Those Reapers, their DPS isn't... I'm sure they can kite a lot, but I don't think that's the answer against Mass Marauder. Nope. Yeah, which builds uh, faster, the... Marines or Reapers? Marines. Marines. And they don't cost gas. Yep, that's but, uh, yeah. yeah, this is already over. Yeah, I mean, he's... Sure, he can take out one, but, uh... Oh, oh this man. Is over. Yeah. Ghost Chant is not going to like this. No. <laughs> Each of the, you know, even trying yeah. to go after them with SCVs, the Marauders can keep slowing them and kiting them. Yep. And... Oh, he's caught a couple. A couple, yeah, but uh, there's a couple more coming. Yeah, oh, actually, that was quite a few. That, he might be able to, if he go well, run... He... each tank on the way, too. This is a lot of economic damage to deal with. He's at half the supply. Yeah, he held. Yeah. But he's got to turn Very his guys around. Very costly holds. Six yeah. workers left. Five workers left. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. I mean, yeah, sure, he can build, uh, he can make mules, but... <laughs> 20 to, uh... 
22 yeah. after he is down. This now this not... Reaper, this Reaper will get home while there is nothing there, and he won't have to focus at home. So yeah, I mean it's, it's a lot to but... ask for. I, it can. There, there's no units at home. Th this Reaper. And he will... does have that siege tank to hold things off. Right. So he's making he's making the best of a, frankly, pretty infuriating situation. Yeah. So he got that one. Oh. Oh, nice. and also preventing the uh, preventing the starport yeah. from connecting to that add-on. Yeah, and he's killing oh, run you. Run marines, it? run marines, run. Oh, he can he can't afford to even lose marines right now. Oh, I don't I don't think he can repair in time, can he? Oh, oh just yes. Barely. And his reaper is still. And I mean, one thing. Oh, he just reaper just got killed. <laughs> Nuts. Yeah. Another another catch from those really bold SCVs, the boys as we call them. Yeah. I mean, Vale's economy isn't that great either, but it's still twice as good. And Cloaked Banshee's on the way. It's like, he found he found an annoying start, and he wants to do anything he can to make this yeah. more annoying. Yeah. I was hoping for a long game, but I, I, I do like the fact he cheesed him out. Um, yeah, well, it's like... Well, I mean, he, he, he knows it's cloak. Cool you know what, though? He knows it's Cloak Banshees. Look at that missile turret. There's no other reason he'd put that up. Uh, I agree there. What two Marines. Got... Yeah, we got two Marines just kind of going around, uh, picking on those poor barracks. They can't fight back. Yeah, well, there's still. Uh, there's a tank now, some... so. Yeah, uh. Marines are usually pretty good against Banshees, but not two. two Marines against one Banshee. Yeah. But there's a Missile Turret and a uh, Cyclone at home. Yeah. And still that Siege Tank, too, so... I mean, he's he's got time to recover. There's a limit to what can be done, but... Banshee... You know, Banshees don't have to hit the Mineral Line. Uh, it, it, this one does. This, yeah, this, I'll, I'll grab two... that. There's two and um, that uh, and that cyclone. Yeah. There you go. There you go. There you go. Oh, yeah. clutch! No don't don't. <laughs> they so, definitely with the lead, but not not as much of a lead as he could have had. It's TVT. Who the it heck knows? <laughs> and I mean the the cloak banshee's got nothing. And so, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, these two cyclones have to be careful. Might be, yeah, they have to be very careful. They might be able to snipe something, but no, he should go home with them. Yeah, he. I just, you know, he can't afford run, 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 run. Yes, run, 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 run. Okay, uh, they yes. ran. Yes, excellent. Get the f out of there. Like go a tornado. Those... Yeah, go take on. Nope, oh, nope. Uh, I don't think you can afford this, man. Yeah. <laughs> Keep running. You kind of need those at home. Yeah. He's got one at home. Eh? He, he sees a bunch of... Yeah. Only just, uh... Only just getting ready to put down that expansion that got denied the first time around. Yeah. So that... they both got their defenses up, but Vale's... He's he's got plenty of mining from his natural already. Yeah, it's and I mean it's in a rough spot, but yep. the one thing about TVT, it's hard to kill a Terran. It really it is. is. Indeed. And so, like, if this was a Protoss, I'd be like, yeah, the Terran's gonna win. But you can no make pylons a, to snipe here. You can make a really, really, you know, one second bad decision with the Terran. And mm -hmm. all your marines walk right into two siege tanks, and the game changes. Or and thus, you really want to make sure that the bad decision isn't yours when you're already behind. Yep. Yeah, so you know, I, I hate to say it, but I know this is a very David move. But Stim just started for Veils. I don't think uh, Stim is most of the way done for Ghost Chant. If he the starports finished, he gets two, and he just doom drops them. He gets that one for, tank. For those watching at home, I'm David. Uh, that's yes. who he was referring to. Yes, sometimes sometimes you're notorious. Like, I'm behind, I have to go and 
do something even if it's wrong. Yeah. Oh, we'll, we'll see this move out. You better run. Those are very valuable at this point in the game. He's he's keeping a close eye on them, so that's good. He uh Yeah. Uh yeah, but Boy, destructible rocks were not destructed. Right. But so he, he knows can, this is he coming. Can he can prepare for it. He can catch the Oh, we gotta run! Run! Uh, run! Yeah. That's the opposite of running. Oh, yeah, it's called landing. Yeah. You don't. <laughs> I don't know what he's. I mean, I, I don't want to second guess him. He's a really good Terran player, but. Well. It's a difficult position, this... and Vales is. Yeah. Not a slouch himself. Yeah, he's. Got that high ground vision. Yeah. Got the... Poops. Poops ah, down. poops. Yeah. <sighs> Let's get this first. I'll let you do the talking. Yeah. Man. Those are some good games, though. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's bring him in. Yeah. Wow. Well, so I'm going to start with uh, Ghost Chant. I'd like to say that those were clearly the two best TVTs we've ever seen in FSL. And that first game was, even though you lost, was an unbelievable display of talent. You you moved your units almost perfectly, always matching Veils move for move, always being in position, always sieging your tanks first. Um, he out-expanded you, but it was really unbelievably skilled on both parts. Did you, that first game, did you feel taxed mentally? Because we saw a couple mistakes, but... No, just, just lack of practice. I was telling Cyan earlier, it's been inventory and I've been bouncing around working 60 hour weeks, so... No, the game, <laughs> the game, no. I I just played like garbage. That's it. I I, I would disagree that you that played like some garbage. pretty high quality garbage, because <laughs> the... I, I play Terran on occasion. I noticed I noticed that both of you know, you probably don't know this on either side, but both of you actually had points in that game where there were multiple SCVs just kind of rallied out to uh a ramp. Yes, I never fixed I like I kept looking at the rally and I would keep boxing like six SCVs and moving them over to a, to another command center and I was like, why don't I just fix this rally? Yeah. And Vales actually had the same problem a little bit earlier on because the I... two of you were in each other's face so much. Yeah, it looked like Vale's pulled the boys to do anything. early on. I'm like, oh, he's pulled the boys. No, he just sent seven, ten SCVs to hang out in the middle of the map and then sent them back. So there was little mistakes like that, but you guys were really... It, it, mistakes are, are a hard term for it because when you're being pushed like that, there's a million things to pay attention to. That's the beauty of StarCraft. Um, but the second game I was going to ask, after the that... What must have been a really taxing first game, um, and getting cheesed out—that's it's kind of that always burns me up a little bit. But you held it really well, um, not enough to come back. But when you saw those Marauders, what popped through your head? I went, "Oh, this, go figure." <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That—that that was it. Yeah, yeah, you. You know, it's one of those things that your Reaper on the other side of the map just got surrounded. And it was very well done on Vale's part to surround it. Otherwise, the, the damage would have equalized, which was yeah, quite impressive. Yeah, I, pop, I popped over to my base to see what exactly was attacking me. I was hoping it was just a Reaper, and I would pop back. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh, I need to do a couple things before I bounce back to my Reaper. And I bounced back to the Reaper, and I was like, oh, well, so much for that. Yeah, Vale's yeah. actually... again, hard to do multiple things at once, and it's... You, you two are both excellent at juggling a lot of things, and, you know, juggling four balls at once, you know, takes a lot of practice. The fifth ball, sometimes there's not much you can do with that. Uh, <laughs> Vales, big question I had, were you, were you planning in advance to have a Marauder Rush be one of your matches, or was it sort of a... That last match was exhausting. Let me see if I can just get this over with immediately. In my back pocket, I noticed he didn't mm. uh, Reaper or... Well, it was a Reaper scout, wasn't it? It was no SCV yeah. scout. So I was like, do I try it? It's a smallish map. I'll just risk it. Uh, and if we have to slog it out on game three, then 
slog out in game three was probably a yes. little bit too risky maybe but it's, it's the it's... real benefit of being ahead you know yeah, there's a little bit more flexibility and taking risks so um, i messed up the scv drill there during the second match and it kind of annoyed me i only caught one marauder i was hoping to catch two when i had them on the ramp there but i messed up you... the micro there the, the, I was going to say, the first time you did, the second time you did the drill, you actually caught three of them, and it was really well done. Um, I, I mentioned that during the game, that uh, your Reapers really, your SCVs really drilled nicely on that. So, um, Sometimes I think the boys behave, sometimes they don't. That was kind of an ongoing theme. I, I think you're being a little hard on yourself, Ghost Chant. That, um, that was well played both times. Vales, I have to ask you about that, um, the... the Reaper Marauder, catch. Rock, no. oh, Reaper catch. The Reaper yeah. catch. You caught both when you had no units on your side of the map. You caught the Reaper twice. Is that something you practice a lot, or I, I do it in twos. I play twos quite often. Ah, uh, do do catch Reapers. A lot know, of Reapers in there. The map, it was... on the side of the map or whatever. It, yeah, because so, you, know, you just have to hope they're not paying attention. I mean, I'm guessing he he was just looking away for a second. I was looking away. It was yeah, just for a away, second. Back and I'm like, oh, so it takes, all right. yeah. Yeah. That's what I was gonna say. Though it all it takes, but it, it's not all it takes. It takes that that beautiful surround, that perfect, that perfect movement yeah. of the SCVs. Just to it looked it looked like something you'd practice a hundred times because I didn't expect you to catch it, and all of a sudden, both times caught. I'm like, oh well, that that's gonna be that. Because it felt pretty good getting it because I was like, if, if that's gonna start annoying me for the next two minutes, because he originally slipped away, and then I think he yeah. looked away, didn't he? And then yep, like. Two seconds later, or whatever, it was surrounded. That's the that is why I don't play Terran. TVT is that type of. I looked away from my Reaper for a second, and now I get to lose the game because of it. And that which is why is... I shouldn't play Terran, but <laughs> I, I'm pretty hard headed. So yes, I want to compliment you both. That was just a wonderful game to spectate. Uh, I think you know, both if, of those if, even. If, if Nihilus plays that that well, Ghost Chant, if he, he plays that well versus other Terrans, I, I can't see him losing in a set, to be honest. I I well. honestly think that level of display, I expect to see you guys both in the playoffs to uh, to the have season, a rematch. The season is absolutely not over yet, and the two of you, you know, you talk about being ahead a couple games, you two are both ahead a couple games in the league, so... I'm looking forward to seeing what both of you do next, and I would love to see you uh, clash again. Yes, absolutely. Well, guys, uh, we'll see you guys next time. Yeah. All right. Good luck, good luck. Yeah. In your next games. Have fun, have fun. <laughs> bye, 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 bye. Yeah. All right, guys. KG. Okay. KG. We have... That was... Oh. Yeah, go ahead. That was what I expected out of it. That was awesome. Yeah, no, it was really good. I know he's frustrated because he didn't play well, but for <laughs> us spectators... It was fun he's, to watch. Like, here's, he knows his mistakes. Here's the thing, guys. There's a yeah. level you play in, and you're not happy if you don't play anywhere close to that. He felt like he played way below his level. So that's why he's frustrated. But I, I, well, it was enough to impress me. I was like, wow, these guys are playing really well. I, I if know. If you're not it, frustrated, you're not playing StarCraft. Yep. All right, I, well, you know what? Of, you're playing one of those other games. You know, we, yep. we, uh, we already reconnected and... Uh, Got Neutrophil and uh, her right. time to Ooh. hop on because Uber XL wasn't ready yet, and she's on now. But it's too, you know, we we already yeah, got we're ready her, to go. So let's yeah, go but they're that. more on than she is, so let's go for it. All right, we yeah, have so... another code S match, don't we? Yep. Yeah. Here you go. Neutrophil and Hurt and Time are now on. Feel free to uh, ask the tough so, questions again. I'm gonna ask a uh, Neutrophil. Uh, he went down his last match. Uh, is he looking for revenge? Going to uh, take it out on Hurt in Time today? Um, I did actually play uh, Sir Melligan last. I did win that one, but... Um, oh, yeah. Uh, I haven't played a Terran in a little while, so it'll be interesting. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Are you feeling more confident today? Yeah. Uh, I'd say definitely, especially compared to Veils. But, um, yeah, I don't have anything specific planned. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, there's multiple, definitely quite a few Terrans in the Code S. Uh, you know, you said you haven't, haven't played one in a while. Is it a good thing, or, you know, is it kind of a drawback that you're playing one now? I say, um, since I kind of improvise in all my matches, um, 
it means that there's less for people to scout, so it's pretty good. All right, go for it. Yeah, hurting time. Um, I think you've, I think you're familiar with uh, your opponent. How are you feeling in the? Uh, how are you feeling on this matchup? I don't think hurting times in the voice chat. Well, that would make it hard for me to ask him questions, wouldn't it? Sure. Oh, oh, I was yeah. gonna move him. Oh well. Hey. Okay. Hurt um. Time. So. All right. Uh, so. <laughs> We we miss microed your uh, your voice channel. So, Bonnie, as you had a question for Hurt in Time. Didn't? Hurt in Time, uh, you've um, are you confident going against Neutrophil? I think you've played him a couple times in the past. No, not at all. No, no. I uh, I, I really have not haven't been You've never actually played, played him. Much. They haven't. Huh? No, I I oh, I've, I've played him plenty, but I. Uh... Yeah. I, I I haven't played him recently, and I haven't been playing that much, and I've been drinking wine all night. So, oh, well, well and lovely that's... decorations behind you too. Yeah, yeah. So, are we gonna have a very out. festive game? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's all about the fun. All right, shall we go Wasslin then? Any other questions? Uh, no, I I think we've got a feel for the night. Um, We'll see if the uh, wine helps hurt in time relax or uh, makes his hands a little uh, harder to control. <laughs> Legend of the Drunken Grandmaster. <laughs> All right. Ready? Yep. Yeah. All right. I don't All right. Good luck to both See you on the other side. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Look. Okay. I haven't heard the drinking excuse yet on FSL. I, you know, as someone who uh, organizes bar crafts, yeah, that just occurred to me. I, I, I'm i used to hearing that more often uh, outside of FSL, but then again, <laughs> you know, it's the old <clears throat> thank God for cold fusion. Yeah, I, I, I... I don't... He did not... He hardly looked... You know, he didn't look inhibited, so we'll just have to see him. I, I know lots of bowlers who bowl way better drunk, so maybe they're StarCraft oh, yeah. players who play better a little uh, buzzed. And, and I know golfers who make a point of buying a round after the ninth hole for everyone but themselves, so can work for you or against you. But, uh, yeah, this should be a very different style of game, don't you think? Uh, yes. Yes, <laughs> I... The, the last two... Um... The last two competitors? Yes, the last two competitors were very evenly matched. These two, uh, there's a little bit of a skill difference between Neutrophil and Hurt in Time. I'd say it's like... I mean, like... Vale, Vales was very modest when he talked about his chances, but uh, Hurt in Time, it sounded sounded like he's... More resigned. Maybe not as... Yeah, also, he, he did not put a very confident air on. Maybe I, and maybe he's just putting his opponent's defenses down. I, I think uh, Neutrophil has two owed him the last at least two times they've matched up in the last couple seasons. So you know we um, really need to publish an FSL almanac so we can keep track of the stuff. <laughs> yes, we should an FSL almanac uh, so we can uh, go back in time and bet on FSL games if we ever Marty McFly it. Oh, absolutely. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get the mothership, cast time warp, and then make some dollars. Um. Fun, because I was actually thinking about uh, Doc and Marty McFly with the whole, uh, the whole Archon not getting stuck in one space thing. The old, where we're going, we won't need doors. <laughs> you know, you can, now you can get Archons purposely stuck and act as short-range uh, anti-Zergling with their shield batteries. Hey, you gave me a great idea. All right, but in the meantime, in the top right, we have the light blue Terran, and he is... Hurting time. And in the bottom left, he always likes to have the HF before the GL. Purple Protoss. Neutrophil. All right. Well, early we scout. We have a probe. Uh, 
early scout or something more insidious? Mm. I think I early think scout. early scout, but you never know. Yeah, you do never know. Is this East Coast server? I'm in Florida. I'm assuming Florida. Yeah. That's... All right. Balls fully up. That's okay. nice. Let's see some East Coast Protoss. Yeah, there he is, tickling the SCV, but of course... He chased it away. Yeah. Look at that. Partially, uh, partially completed supply depot still serves as a block, as we saw last time. He's scrolling back and forth at the mineral line. So, it's as far as I... insidiousness goes, you think he's going to bother putting down a block in pylon? Not as no. good of an idea against uh, Terran. You, you see, this can... is a three racks. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think Rax would... is well out of view. I, I don't think a blocking pylon would be a good plan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I didn't say it was a good plan. Oh, yeah. That SPV isn't repairing. Uh, okay, there you go. What, what do you mean repairing? Tec sorry, technically you cannot repair a building when it isn't complete. Right. Building. Yeah. Okay. Yes. yes, fine. Um, the the counter at home, um, he wants uh two gates. I mean, that, two gas before Nexus. Yeah. I this don't, is I don't think he's planning for long game, do you think? Um, yeah, I think he's going to show up with 16 Marines and kick him. And we'll kick him in the pylon, huh? Kick him right in the pylon. Um, the expansion, he's only on one gate. Um, mm -hmm. He hasn't put down his tech. Oof. Yeah. What's now, he, what's he going for? With that probe patrolling back and forth, sooner or later he might kind of wonder why nothing's come down yet. But oh, he doesn't have much to produce with. I know. I was gonna say he, he didn't. No Stargate. A third pylon. I. Mm. What, what's the third pylon for? I mean, maybe because he's gonna catch up in supply before because the the Nexus was late. That's a second gateway. Oh, uh, my Protoss brain does not like the looks of this. No. There's Protoss... a command center. Um, I, I'd like. Okay. Still no factory though. You know, I mean, yeah. I got to assume that he's at least planning to get something done with these. Oop. Yeah. That. Has that adapt, but he's completely walled off. Yeah. I'd like to Other see... Other interesting thing, not a single add-on for... Yeah, well, he doesn't have gas. No, gas he, he, cut, he cut down to one uh, one SCV mod in gas. No, it, no, he was gasless for a while. Oh. Long time. Okay, so that was the SCV that just finished the refinery. Got it. Mm -hmm. Hmm. This, this thing... You know, he's got, he's got an 18 to 8 army advantage. I don't know if... It's not going to get better, though. He's got to go pretty no, good it's... here. If if he's gonna take advantage of this, he actually he has to do something with all those marines. Ah, uh, and they're hmm. hmm. Did that did that adapt? See them walk by? Um, I don't know. The I tried to switch. I tried to switch to his vision, but then that uh, the hallucination's gonna see him right there. But I don't know if he saw that. Hallucination blocking a command center from landing. I like that. Yeah, he, he knows something's up, all right. Two shield batteries go down right away. Another gateway. And he pulls the... He Adapt abandons... Not long. He, he abandons the uh, the low ground. Nexus, yeah. Yeah. But you know mm. what? And here's if that pylon we were talking about. Don't go up the ramp. Don't go up the ramp. Or, or uh, go up the ramp and die. Well. I mean... Dimless Marines are some of the most pathetic units in the game. Stimless, stimless no, non-shielded Marines versus uh, versus sentry shield battery. Yeah, so, you better run. Yeah, I, I don't think... Uh, well, you know, those, those Protoss units can just keep falling back to those shield batteries over and over. And with his control, with Neutrophil's control... Yeah. You know what's I mean, funny? Because this was a, a good build order. I really like the build order out of neutral. the trigger out of hurt time. Hurtin time. But I, mm, yeah, nah, he's pretty. He's yeah, those uh those protoss units rallied keep his, regaining his shield. That health is not coming back anytime soon for the Marines. Right, he rallied his uh 
Yeah, he still doesn't have. Oh, stamina look at that! They're not even. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> oh. Is he gonna nah. finish? Gonna finish one of them off? Nah. So. Uh, might just... have enough marines to defend, but mm -hmm. that no. was. Well, that's he's gonna, gonna get, get a lot done. He's gonna get slapped right here. Yep. It was a good idea, but um, yeah, this is a slapping. Mm. Oh yeah. All right. Yeah, this is slapping. Blink up and the warp prism. Yeah, blink uh, blink stalkers outnumbering uh stimulus marines. I love that. He's blinking and picking them up and dropping them yeah. during cooldown. So. Why is he even... He could have just blinked on that tank and... Won. Yeah, I agree. But, you know, he's... He, no, I think he knows I now mean, he's in the lead. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, his position right now, he can afford to stay safe. He also can see everything that's happening there, too, with that observer. Yeah, and it's still... There's still no tech lab, so he, he's... He's yeah, what is it, two minutes, two and a half minutes from for Stim. Yeah. If you're going a marine build, interesting. I mean, he's got add-ons for the factory and the starport, but yeah, not not, not a single barracks with an add-on. Yeah. There's we'll have to ask him about this. Because if there is such a thing, this is it. If there's four of them without an add-on. Yeah. Yep. Get more gateways going. Uh, robotic support bay. Uh, it's it, he's, it's hard. He's, re he's ready to keep uh, to keep pushing this advantage. Yeah, it's hard to get hyped about this. The uh, right. position for the Terran is there goes that uh, hit squad. Yeah, yeah, but it's we've stimless. Got... It, it's I hate to yeah, keep going it's... on that, but without stim, this build has to hit before anything or like pretty much. Know. Yeah. Well, it's got to have something behind it. If not stem, then at least one siege tank to support them. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, there we go. I mean, they're going to get a lot of kills, but I don't... I don't know if that's going to matter too much. Yeah. Recall. Yeah. Um, oh, Is he going to get... Yep, got every single one of them out of there, so there's that. There and is I... that. But oh. the thing is, it's he's three got, base now. He's got over 400 gas. I, I just want to... I just want to beg him to make a tech lab and a few reactors... Yeah, That's yeah, fun. that that'd be useful. Um, a Viking would be useful. Not yeah. this. This would not be useful. No, those I mean, those Marines he's, again. He's got non-upgraded Marines on the mind, and I mean, yeah, yeah he's got medevacs now, but but they're not recovering uh... their stim. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, he's got he's got medevacs to heal them when they don't stim. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, and the uh, warp prism. He can see the warp prism in his base, yeah. but he's not responding. So those zealots, do they have charge? I don't think so. Charge those boys. Oh, he's got a yeah, little. Yeah, but I mean, they're still zealots, spot. and those are still SCVs. So, yeah, that is. <laughs> I mean, he's true. being he's being annoying you know what's funny? with the he pulled, he pulled the uh, while he was dealing with the drop back at his his base. Um, he pulled the zealots away, but nothing. Only three marines came to fight them. He could have. The zealots would have easily beat that. Hmm. Lag, huh? PP. Hmm. I I don't know. Uh. I. Game pause. Okay. We, go. we got the pause. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well. Well, if you're gonna lag, you might as well lag hardcore. Yeah. Uh, my friend must have 300 BPS modem. Oh. <laughs> now that sounds that sounds like something that could really dominate with Brood War. Pre pre remastered, of course, but yeah. <laughs> uh huh. I was gonna say. Uh, I remember waiting for a 300 BPS modem. Yeah, I know the the day the day is when. You you know you and I were let let let's let's take the old when I was your age thing because yeah we were into computers back when a three and a half inch double sided high density two and a half megabyte floppy drive was incredible. You, not I as incredible that. not as incredible when King's Quest Six came out on I think eight of them. 
Or you could get the CD version. Remember the uh, five and a half inch? Oh, I remember them. Those were the floppy disks that everyone still called floppy oh, because they everyone were. didn't realize that there's a floppy disk inside those three and a half inch plastic shells. Occasionally, I break. Yeah. yeah, I used to break those American Online, uh, you know, demo discs open just to show people. You see them, floppy. This is really. F and speaking of, and there go there go the zealots. Yeah, now they have charge. They will... Yes, they do. And yeah, this. Um, I mean. Hurt in time the, might stop. The walls are closing around hurt in time. Yeah. You know what? He didn't kill any of them. He just kind of stood there and kind of watched them burn things. Is, yeah. is the refinery going to burn down? As when I play Terran, I've had this happen a plenty of times where I, I think I sent my workers to repair it and they actually just start, they start mining, mining from it. Really? Yes. I thought if, if you right click, I thought they repair, but uh, maybe. I, I'm, I'm not sure which smart cast option takes precedence. I know R. For a pair of G forget or if Five, it comes to that. Four, and Happy New Year! <laughs> yeah. Alright. Well that uh The fourth base goes up for Neutrophil. Can we, can we say that this is a game for those with refined taste? <laughs> yes. Um the fourth base up for Neutrophil. Um extended yeah, thermal lance is already done. Fly ahead, a bunch of upgrades. I, I am seeing some add-ons for those uh, stim! <laughs> for those Woo! now. The oh, eleven man. minute stim timing. It's just what Maru would do. Oh man. You know when the player is more stimmed than Marines are for most of the game, huh? Yes. Is this gonna work? Three zealots. It's gonna work. It's gonna work. No but move! Move! Do something! F two! Come on, come on, come on. Go! Go! You can do it! Uh, Yay! He did yeah, it! Yeah, alright. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Poor zealots. They only managed to kill seven workers. Yeah. <laughs> Ghosts are out. That they are. Before new before stem. Yeah. I don't see any ghosts being built though. Nah. No, you see, when it's when it's close to Christmas, you have to build exactly three ghosts uh, <laughs> to teach Scrooge a lesson with. Yeah. And uh... you know what's what's funny is I bet you he warps, he goes right back in, warps three more zealots in, and it works again. You know, if it works, uh, if it works a couple times. I don't know. We do have some missile turrets he has to get he around now. Right, he could have gone right back to where he was. Yeah. Oh, hallucinated colossi. That's what the C stands for, walk, by the look way. Look at them walk right there. <laughs> they would have actually worked as regular colossi. It's, it's, like they're, it's like they're doing this little mocking dance, kind of like... <laughs> oh, no. Oh, boy. And by the way, in Data C, I believe the C does stand for colossus. Uh, the real ones over here, not the hallucinated ones. And I wonder... Is this going to be a big mind game where uh, Hurt in Time is left wondering if these Colossi are also hallucinations? Uh, no, I, I think these these Colossus are going to, now that he's maxed out and 50 supply up. Yeah, um, once you get to 200, not much you can do other than just destroy. Uh, there, okay, I got the, got the hallucinated uh, Phoenix this time. It, it, sees, it sees the army. And, uh, yeah... And yeah, they do yeah. have stim now. That is true. They but, do uh, have stim. It and if and if the uh, Colossus would stop shooting at the the yeah, yeah there we go. That's Start Colossus shooting. for you. That is it's, one thing it's because they've got so much range. They can end up picking up targets while everything else is moving closer to actual stuff to attack. Yeah. Now you know that right there. Yeah. Went really well for um, for Hurt all things time. considering, but Hurt in Time yeah. still down fifty supply. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It, it it didn't change the See, game. Well, you know, you talked about Terran is Terran is hard to kill, and yeah, yeah, he does have siege tanks on that high ground. Hopefully, he'll repair those. They're not going to burn down, but uh, he's going to fly definitely... right over this. Oh man. I see you! At least they didn't fly right over a bunch of stalkers. I've done that. Yep. Like, wait, why were there stalkers there? 
yeah. Um, you know, these zealots are... We'll see. We'll see what's going on. He He's running home to deal with that drop. And he sees it, so he's got the, the guys patrolling waiting for yeah. it. Do they unload? And it's it's going to unload. It's going to hit. Yeah, he can't warp in anything because he's maxed out. Ah. But he's gotten up. He's got guys there. How well are they going to do, though? Uh, that's a recall. Yeah, he did have to back them off a little. Recall! Oh, recall! Is he going to Is he gonna catch? Does not catch either of them. Yeah. Oh, and look at that snipe. Oh, man. Or cancel, anyway. But yeah, cancel. that was well done. Well, yeah, if it wasn't... If that was... If he, he stopped Target of opportunity, sixth. anyway. He stopped the sixth while he was on his... Yeah. Third. And that's what we Let's were talking about, you know? Yeah. Expansions get more vulnerable the further out you gotta go. To, gotta go. Um, um, are these guys gonna make it? He sees it. He's... Yeah. He saw the army was there. That's kind of a weird... Well... Mode. Right. We had we had the uh, Marauders Earth coming out of the actually, meta back, but we had some others hoofing it. I like this little drop here. It's gonna get a lot done. He's got all those guys kind of running around his base. Are oh, the it... VN of Terran drops. Uh, hmm. Bane, maybe. I'm assuming that's what it is, but I think Veil. It's Veils in in chat, and I think Veils, by default, has to spell everything with a V. It's part of his gimmick. The eight colossus Look by at, itself. Yeah, boy. That's a lot of tall pink. Yeah. Lasers. I mean, the lasers. This, I mean, seriously, you know, yeah. that whole C for Colossus. And they're all thing, shooting. Like, they're all shooting. They're at all shooting the refinery the <laughs> because the refinery, the refinery is what you want to make an example of in this game. You know, that's the thing. They they nerf. They're gonna nerf the um. The refinery. No, the carriers, so that the interceptors don't get attacked first. How about just make it so oh, that... Oh, yeah, we got GG. GG. So. How about just make it so that uh, Colossus... ...figure out some way to only attack the things that actually shoot back. Well, also, you know, if possible, you want to keep the Colossus attacking light units, too. You know, I, it, I, Marauders can overrun... Any, any unit, unit is better than a refinery, yeah. Right, like you have seven clock. Oh, I'm gonna kill that refinery I while think everyone else is getting shot. At that point, I think at that point he kind of realized it was gonna be a hard game to lose. Uh, yes, yes. It, it, so the Colossus can do as Colossus want, hallucinated or otherwise. <laughs> yes. You don't often see the two scouting Colossus. The best part about it is everything in the game shoots a Colossus. It's the most vulnerable unit in the game. And they made it all made the way through. High and low, yeah. <laughs> it, yeah, that was. And and hallucinations take double damage too. Right. So those were some. Those were some. Oh, globe trotting hallucinations. Yes. No. Oh. Neutrophil hurting time. I don't know. I, uh, that was that... that was a game that got. I'd say possibly decided fairly early on, but it never ceased to be entertaining. Right. I, I think that um, Hurt and Time's timing was poor on that. But... Then, you, you know what? Yeah, he could have uh, won if he had just went. Right? Pulled yeah, right, exactly. Right. Go with all the Marines. Yeah. Right, he had to go or he had point? to build stem. He couldn't not build stem and then go late. That, the, that, the that's not thing. an option. The other thing he should have done is clear that that probe at the bottom, right, with a couple yeah. of marines. And then if he had right, done that, they couldn't see what was going on. is in there. Boom! Just go hit hard, and I, I've yeah. lost to that. Send one marine times. down there. Oh, it it, it definitely uh, works. It's just got to go earlier or with stim. You can't. At one point, at one point, there was four barracks against one gateway. Right. He's got to go then. Uh, he he yeah. can't wait till if it's... you're gonna go, you go. The shield batteries are up, and it's four gateways. But this but, moon dance, moon dance. This map, it's more defensible. I would agree. Yeah. And I think yeah, it favors. Cut Terran. off like that. You can pick up that pocket. Yeah. HFGL. In the upper left, we have the king of the colossi, pink Protoss. He is. Neutrophil. And in the lower right, the 
Brad Terran is called. Hurting time. And Hurtin' Time answers the HFGL with a GLHF. Shows him how it's done. Friendly scout again? Yeah, um, he definitely he definitely likes that. It can It didn't help last game, probably yeah. enough. Well, no. He could have he could have done a late probe and just left it there and saw everything coming. It yep. it's a bit of a sacrifice. The earlier you pull a worker away. Thanks for the host, Skylar. The board... Hey Skylar, thank you. He made it in this time, and well, the SCV is like, get out of here! Yeah. And so for that early, for that early scout... Kind of with the top now. Okay, there we go. Yep, so the early scout... Got him. Retreats. Yeah, it, it got oh, him. Oh, no, 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 no retreat in there. That's the fun thing with uh, Probe versus SCV. Once you get your shields back, you can take a couple more slaps at it. That yeah. got in mind, though. What do you think of the uh, core... Uh, single gate core pylon build? I'm... I, 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 I usually make my Nexus next. And, I, I mean, I, I try a very, very kind of standard, you know try to defend against anything build on that one but there's it, there's not much advantage of another pylon before you have more things to power it so it's it's not usual yeah it's, it's a little backwards and at least as far as i understand the matchup so um, all right but I only Skyler has been climbing the ladder and freedom knows it okay so um, more standard uh, this time. More standard, and a little bit, you know, definitely definitely a lot less aggressive, too. We don't have... Neither of them are trying to stop each other's expansion. Neither of them are building up an immediate Tier 1 army. Yeah. Um. Curtain Time's expansion come down just a little bit before opponents. Yeah, we'll finish. Mules. He's got the bunker there. Not much to defend against yet. Aside from things that can kind of shade right past it. Well, we'll see if this... We'll see if this does anything annoying. You know. ah, it's gonna go for that SCV back there. Oh, nope. Well, no, just taking a look around. Yep, and then he kind of... I like the positioning. Um... He still hasn't picked a tech path, which, again, I like to get my tech a little earlier than this, but... Oh, there we go. Robo. We got Robo. Okay. And... And Twilight. we got, uh... uh... Twilight Council. Yeah. Every That's... time Citadel of a Dune comes off my tongue. Well, the old... Uh, um, Hurtin' Time's a, a much, very standard 2 one one yeah. Um, I, I okay. think that's... Is that basically as standard as Terran can get? Uh, I think 1-1-1 one, one, one may be a little bit more common. It all depends. Yeah. I know my Zerg and my Protoss a little bit better than my yeah. Terran builds. Um, and I, so... I tend to keep... I tend to keep more track of what is standard for... You know, the training video oh, he... more than the pro play. Oh, look at that SCV. I see. What, what SCV? Oh, the SCV that uh, that the supply depot blocked. One of those nice things where it kind of went spinning around in circles for a little bit. Oh. Now. NG Bay? Um. All his stuff is there. Um, Hurtin' Time, uh, he, uh, he, he's got to spend a bunch of his cash. He's got to spend it pretty quick here. Uh, his factory's not whirling away. Mm. Um, he's not supply blocked, so he's got a barracks sitting there. Looks like with Hurtin' Time, there's a lot of, lot of little things he's been forgetting to do as far as his macro goes. Yeah. And... There's that stalker 
Is that like on a very, 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 very short patrol path? Which one? <laughs> oh yes, I see him yeah. now. Yep. I'm not sure if it works in Starcraft it is. 2 like it does in Brood War, but in Brood War, when you're in patrol, it acquires the target just a little bit faster, so it's very popular with things like moving while attacking, but I don't know. I think maybe that's just for entertainment value there. He's dancing. Oh, yeah. Not, and not actually uh, forward slash dancing, just dancing. Just dancing. So we got to move out. Our uh, first of the game. Um, uh, we don't have, we don't have any just tanks. Just a in. We've got some. We've got some chats between our code ass players about, uh, you know, how to how to have fun with this, how not to be too hard on yourself. KJ says uh, he plays all races on an account he doesn't care about. I play all races on an account I do care about, but I don't care about my league. I care about unlocking portraits. So it's. Uh, it's going to have a big blink up. Oh, I like the missile turrets for denying that. Yeah, that's I'd like nice. The, I'd like the tank to be getting a better... I don't like it where uh, it is there. Yeah, I mean, that's a point where it's not defending either mineral line. It's not even or, the mineral line, entrance. the blink up. Yeah, it's also uh, kind of getting in the way. Honestly. Yeah. That's, uh... Well, fusion tanks on ramps are something I try to avoid and often fail to avoid. Oh, yeah. wow. Neutrophil loves his short patrol in. That one's a little bit more of a reasonable one in case there's a medevac coming in. Oh. What do we have? It's not a wall! It's not a wall! Mm. The Artosis Pylon followed by the Artosis Salt, huh? Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> We're get. I mean, even though this game, you know game started out differently, we're still kind of in the same place where Neutrophil ha is just significantly ahead in in macro and you know, and a con in workers and an army. Sim started I Started, it. yes, but... In the, it's seven minutes, oh you really you kind of need to. Yeah, I mean, those tanks are handy. They're going to limit the damage, but there's still a lot going on here and it's also going to prevent him from you know, being able to take a third. I I wouldn't bother repairing the supply depot. No, I just start those guys. They, these stalkers very mobile. The work here. isn't there too. He can he can just yeah. send them wherever the tanks aren't. Or if he gets enough position, you know them he's got these the SCVs are. just hanging out. He could. He does. Yeah. The boys again. Sent, Always the boys. He could have sent them down to mine this third base. He got to get he's got to get him back to mining. Oh, the tanks are uh, Yeah, the, that was what I mean. The doctors uh, can go where the tanks aren't or if if the, the, the rest thing of the is, army's got a position the thing go is, where they are. Stim, if Stim finishes, he can the, these are enough marines to hold that. The only oh. problem is is that Stim is Marine, not going to finish in this game. Others, you know, no medevacs. Those Marines are going to get weaker and weaker, whether they Stim or not, while more units keep getting warped in. Done. No defender's advantage. No. And there are those landed Vikings. Who Stim is going to finish? Yeah. Stim! All right. Yay! No medevacs, though. <laughs> um, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Yeah, I, I don't he, think those certain mule, times not. No, he mule hammered his front base, which is under assault, but he kind of left his rear base. Um, he's oversaturated yeah. in his natural, and that doesn't matter. Also, I mean, if you are going to have the Vikings landed, you want them in front because they've got such short range; they can't do any good behind the Marines. It's all, all it's all SCVs, little stuff. Oh, these SCVs are trying to go back, but the the tank has got them blocked off. Yeah, oh, and I, I think this is it. I think yeah, we are almost ready for Code B, honestly. Yeah. One of my favorite Immortal models, by the way. One of the ones you had to purchase individually, or, you know, a little bundle, but outside of War Chest. That being said, alright. Very different kind of game that time. Alright, let's than, bring it uh, Than our previous Code S. <laughs> yes, indeed. All right, congratulations go to Neutrophil. Curtain time. Yeah. I gotta ask yeah. you about the first game. <laughs> yeah, I figured. <laughs> you had a really good idea, 
at one point you were four barracks producing to one zealot on the other side in only one gateway, and then you kind of doodle bopped around. I thought you were going to wait for Stim, but instead you just kind of went when he had a, a whole bunch of stuff. Did yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I was having a lot of lot of issues both both games. Um, yeah. Was there a lot? Were you the one who said you were lagging, or was that yep. neutrophil? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, no, it was me. It was me. I was another. I was just slagging hardcore. And, yeah, uh, I noticed uh, for almost the entire game, none of those barracks had add-ons. So <laughs> stuff, kinda... stuff, stuff kind of threw you off, and then yeah, yeah didn't quite yeah. get your footing again. The first, the second game, you. The build was smooth, and then at the stim timing part of it, you you didn't hit stim. And then again, I think that would have really changed the outcome of that. I, I assume that's the long night and the the wine and the maybe a little out of practice on that. No, I was just having all all sorts of issues, just fighting my units over and over again, mm. and uh, I wasn't getting gas, so I I couldn't stim. I couldn't make a tank for the longest time. I'm like, why don't I? Why don't I have? It's like, oh, my SUVs didn't. Mine, Some, sometimes gas, off nights are a thing. Huh? You know, sometimes, sometimes off nights are a thing. <laughs> sometimes it's stuff going on. Sometimes it's hardware. Sometimes it's just everything. But oh, you got, he's gonna bring in set to camera. Hello. Uh oh, who we got? Yeah, who we got? Hi. Uh, hello. They're hello. all they're all partying, and I'm playing right. Starcraft over here. Um, right. We're gonna let you I'm go Hyper soon. Turtle. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All oh. Right. Good right. games. Good yeah, job. I wish I could hear the music. Good games. I know, right? <laughs> oh, hey, there were mad. bunny. There were bunny ears. They knew that hyper that war bunnies was cast in. <laughs> good night. The fans of Europe. Good hey. Good night. Good night. Hurt good time. Night, good night. GGs. Now, now, Neutrophil. Uh, did those games go pretty much like you expected? <laughs> I do think I was a little sloppy on some things. Uh, I did miss control, and I wasn't macroing my best. But, I'm, cu uh, I'm curious, were you keeping an eye on those two hallucinated colossi? Yeah, uh, I was trying to make archons, and I kept trying to tab to the Dark Templar, but I kept over-tabbing back to the sentry. It was so, it was a was wonderful scout, though. Those two colossi, despite being some of the most vulnerable units, taking double damage, being vulnerable to air and ground attacks, they made it all the way through your opponent's main. Were you expecting that? Honestly, no, but uh, okay. hey, they did their job. <laughs> uh, I... I was inspired. Those games um, were a, a different class of player on one side or the other. Um, were you having fun with your uh, your as David pointed out your mini patrol of the one stalker patrolled as quick as tight as it could be, kind of dancing in your main on the second game, or is that just something that happened? I didn't even notice that was a thing. I just <laughs> yeah. did it. So. It was basically set to control like half a step uh, forward. It looked cool. We zoomed in and out a few times. Uh, how long? How long have you favored uh, doing uh, HFGL instead of GLHF? Um, I think it's been like two seasons. Okay. I, I just started doing it because I think I mistyped it once, but mm -hmm. like I just kept doing it from there. Did the uh, did the fact that you've got those uh, those emotes of GL and HF give you a bit more freedom in there? Oh yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah, it was something I've been meaning to ask about a couple times, and this seemed like the perfect time to do it. Um, you know, you uh, you definitely showed a very dominant performance of, you know, mistakes or no mistakes. So this is a win on your part, 2-0. Hey, I recognize that model. For My... those who don't know, David's uh, daughter made that for me. Yep, well, uh, she even nice. wrapped it. And yeah. stuck it in the Santa Claus, stuck stuck it in the Santa Claus hat. That is a smiley face, out of Crayola starch clay. Yeah. So, so yeah, usually I'm the one kind of showing off little trinkets, but now it's Bunny that's showing off trinkets nice. from my hey, house. Hey, listen. All right. Uh, let let Neutrophil <laughs> go. Yep. Let's He's get to it. Right. We'll see you next. We time. got one more match, and we got <laughs> we got some people staying up late for it. Actually. Yeah. She can't do it anymore because she has to be oh. somewhere. So we're going to reschedule that match. Okay. So no. what we can no. do is just now recap what happened tonight. Tell us what your oh, thoughts are. Oh, excellent. What didn't um, happen? So uh, we got we got five matches uh, cut down to three. Um, I Well, I would say that we had, 
even though we lost the 2v2 in the code B match, I think the code S match, Veils versus Ghost Chant, even though it was a 2-0, was probably our our closest match of uh, the season so far. That was really back and forth. That first TBT game was and really also high level. we we opened up with a banger with Stu Blue again, again impressing. Yeah, Stu Blue. Uh, uh, I am very curious what the rest of the season looks like for him. Um, the Hurt in Time Neutrophil one kind of um, that wouldn't it's... have been one that they would have taken bets bets on in uh, Vegas. I, I think that one exactly is pretty much everyone assumed, but uh, yeah, bit a bit of a rough game and definitely multi definitely handful of errors on both sides, but. Uh... I think the errors hit one side harder. We can put that put it that way. Yeah. So, um, I, like, yeah. Like, um, I like to. And we had uh, a lot of uh, SCVs throughout the night, doing both very impressive and uh, very odd things. Yeah, we had we had uh, you know one moment they were just piling up, uh, little ways from any command center. Next moment they are surrounding and taking out uh, barracks units en masse. Uh, so yeah, I I'd like to think about this as the night of the SCV. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> um, well, can... guys, why don't we talk about sure. what's going on next? Uh, broadcast next week. Uh, yep. Next week. Yeah, let's oh. bring up the. There's next only week. one broadcast, by the way. Right, you're yeah. you're out of town for um, Germany for Friday, right? Not just out of town, yeah. Yes, sir. I'll be at Home Story Cup. Um, mm -hmm. So I'll be there Friday till Monday. So you nice. guys can maybe you'll catch me on camera. I doubt it. <laughs> I, I hope so, and I hope they I hope they keep the really comfortable couches going too. <laughs> so yeah. uh, next Wednesday, yep. Uh, we have um, a two v two Nokia versus Diffusion. Um, and those those are both teams that have uh, surprised people here and there. Yeah. Um, uh, we have we have I guess me taking on uh, Daddy Blue Cyan. Yes, and we have uh, Dismal versus Neutrophil, which I, again might be. Um, might be neutrophil favored, but uh, we'll uh, have to. I guess that's why they play the games, right? Yep. Cy Cyan and Turtle are, are very evenly matched players. If uh, Hyper Turtle practices at all this week, but she and really Bonnie needs to. And Bonnie has been uh, setting practice sessions for me. Is Cyan uh, a shade of blue? Is that is that kind of the gimmick between him and Stu Blue? Or what no color idea. is Cyan? We'll, we'll a have to of? ask him. Those are very good questions on how they came up with the names. But the Mista Fusion in the Nokia game, that again should be yep. a, a, a banger of a series. So we both yeah. have momentum going. You yeah, know, we're getting close to the uh, Christmas holiday season, right? So some yeah. of these will probably be rescheduled. But oh, there yeah. are some cool ones coming up. Uh, Ghost oh. Chant Instability. That, that should be one. Pretty fun. I, I think a pissed off Ghost Chant versus Instability. With that one is one that we. Uh, that's one that we should, and then the Ghost Chant Dark Menace. Oh man, that's he's got. Good. Yeah, the next after the Neutrophil Dismount, the, uh, those Ghost Chant Instability, Ghost Chant Dark Menace, Vales Instability. That oh is. Oh my gosh, those are some great three weeks of games. Yes, those are I think the ones that I'm really looking forward to. I was also really hoping that we can get the um, Turtles and Hair versus Polaris rescheduled. Yes. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that will get one one big thing to note: you can see a lot of gap there. We have a lot less players in Code B than the other leagues this time, so they get much longer breaks. I I think part of it is has to do with good number of Code B people getting bumped up to our league. That's true. Yeah, I well, it we is. We haven't had a relegation from see, A that's... back to B. We've had S yeah. to, to to A, but not you know A to B. I think. I think I think the rel the top end of A can beat the bottom end of S. I think that there's a, a pretty 
pretty defined level of the, yeah, the A players being better than the B players. It's getting close. So, yeah, that's good. Yeah. The overlaps are good, man. And then eventually, yeah. if we have enough people, we can have a code S plus, right? If they, <laughs> if they graduate over some of these code yeah. S guys, you know, get, like get a some really... low mat, get some low mat GMs yes. or. Hot, or... Uh, probably more masters. I thought we'll do well, the GMs. We're gonna be we're gonna be working on reaching out and you know to more of the community. Yeah. Well, and menace we and uh, instability are on their way, so got it. <laughs> exactly. so to when thinking... code ass isn't high enough, that's yeah. what we want to see. That's right. Um, the code A actually has some pretty. If you look at it, um, yeah, gray and cyan, mm -hmm. and gray and little reaper, and stu blue versus Deepu is a uh, sneaky one for this season. So, yeah, you know, I... stu blue is the big surprise in code A right now. He's got some yeah. amazing games. You know, um, that's the thing about this league. The kids grow and they go they go from, you know, make those big jumps and start playing right. higher and higher levels. Yeah. That's true. So we'll they see how that so goes. Down. But, you know, what's your favorite for next uh, the next few games to, to watch, really? If you go back to the schedule real quick. Oh. I'm just really getting into Code S. I mean, I, we I are think... seeing some... We are seeing some people competing in there who you can tell yeah. just want it. And, yeah. and yeah. put in the time, too. Right, Ghost yeah. Chant is... Ghost Chant used to be at my level, and I would say that I would lose to him three out of three times in a best of five. So, um, yeah, his his improvement is quite a bit. Um, and instability as well, I think two seasons ago I could have hung with her I don't think I can do that anymore so it's fun was, seeing these I was able to take a map off her at uh, Psystorm Cup so maybe yeah. someday I can catch up again <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I just think that the Code S players are getting better and better and so are the Code, a lot of the lower end Code A players yeah. are really making a jump, I really I really like that and you know, I'd say that even for Code B, um, Kitty Cat Gamer this season, even though she hasn't won any of your games, her skill is is right there. That in next season, I can picture her being in the Code A. She's really making that yeah, big jump. Yeah, she's just gotta know how to deal with say all the cheeses that she's been uh -huh. getting dealt with, right? The you know, I, I think it's just a matter a couple of games getting a little bit more familiar because. Mm -hmm. Her macro, you know, a couple seasons ago, her macro, she'd miss macro cycles, and you could see yeah. the code B. But now it, it's not as many. She's she's playing faster and quicker, and um, Chinpone is another one that I... He's improved he's, a lot. He has, too. I think that Chinpone's... I, your code B, uh, you might need to get some fresh blood for code B, because... We do. We do need some new people. The, the code <sighs> B, for you guys not, not sure, is bronze, silver, usually. So. Yeah. Yeah. There is I, no code C, at least not yet. I, I think that <laughs> in a couple. A. And we're not seeing people. We're not seeing people fall in skill. We're yeah. seeing some people improve faster than others, but uh, you know, it, it's that thing. The more you play, yep. You know, you can own. You're not going to get worse as long as you keep it up. And um, lastly, the two v two is Ooh. wide open this season, guys. Absolutely is. Um, we've we've had our ups and downs, but uh, Polaris. Is undefeated. I think um, there's a couple other teams that are undefeated. Uh, the New Blord Gray uh, for, no, for Nokia in okay. and, and the Val Hurt in time. Yeah. Um, there so is... Val Hurt With... is my favorite right now. Um, yeah. The whole thing. Oh man. I you know New Blord and Gray uh, I think can give them a run for their money too. So um, yeah, well, and you there's, know what? there's Miguel, some teams we haven't. That haven't had a chance to show themselves a lot in action. I'd say Miguela's skill has also improved quite a bit from those Code B players. When we played against her, she was uh, out macroing uh, one of oh, us. You, so you guys were were really just in a funk, though. I think you guys played I, I, below your level. I, well, Please. I'd agree with that, but Miguel <laughs> Miguela playing, keeping up with the macro is what I'm saying. Is when once those yeah. players start macroing correctly. I think a... with 2v2, something else you're seeing is something similar to what Bunnies and I have been doing for a while. I think there have been more teams that have been figuring out how to complement each other. Mm -hmm. You know, more teams where uh, where you have, you know, maybe some skill differences and the higher skilled person 
has taken taken the front, handled uh, handled more of the scouting harassment, given given the uh, partner more elbow room to macro up, and specifically uh, produce a lot more of what complements what they're playing. That's right. Well, guys, well, that'll yep. do it for uh, tonight. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for casting. Yep. Once again, this was a lot of fun. The games were awesome. Uh, they were. I do want to say this: the the biggest mm. story tonight was the unbelievable meteoric rise by Stu Blue. I did not in a million years think he would two zero the archaic. That one. I, was... I did not. I did not either. But that's it happened. The time. Yeah. It that's happened. He caught him. In the the archaic yep. was. You know, you can't rely on your past skill. You work hard, and that's what happens, right? And yep, uh, the other story there was, it was a lot closer than the 2-0 score, Bale's uh, ghost chant, because game one could have gone either way. And then, of course, game, oh, yeah. two, game two was a, a roll of the dice, right? Let me cheese and see what happens, mm -hmm. and it worked out, right? So and, that yes. could have gone either way. Yep, that was, both games were beautiful. So I hope I think we're casting Wednesday, too, aren't we, David? I believe so, uh, yeah, except week, for, we'll, we'll you know, I'll, I'll definitely be away for one match but yeah <laughs> tortoise and the hare we are the duo in town and we will talk and talk and talk <laughs> <laughs> thanks for the games guys i'll thanks, see you guys uh, later. for hanging out and we'll see you guys uh next wednesday absolutely <laughs>